good. Oh, good! I think we're live! In in true Lauren fashion, we are starting our final ghost trick stream with technical difficulties! Amazing! Um, let's hope that that was a one-time thing and everything's good. Yes, so this is, this is the final ghost trick stream. But I'm not gonna invite, you know, trouble by, by saying anything about it being potentially delayed by like <laughs> more difficulties. Um, no, so before we dive in, God, I'm gonna miss this soundtrack. Next week, by the way, we're starting Chicory, which has a really good soundtrack and I'm looking forward to it, but I am gonna really miss this one. Um, so, uh, so before we dive in and get big reveals, can I talk about a potentially really stupid theory I have about what might be happening or what might happen next? Because I'm really excited about this thing. <laughs> no, it's an idea that I thought of last last week and I mentioned it. Um, but as I was typing up my description for the video of the VOD on YouTube, <laughs> um, I, I was like starting to be like, well, this is why I think that thing might actually not just be stupid, but it, but it could be stupid. I don't know. Anyway, my potentially ridiculous mini golf idea is, and, and maybe this is, maybe this is, um, you guys might think I'm completely crazy and full of garbage for thinking about this, but, but it seems like we are, I don't know why this keeps happening. I did unplug my laptop because I went out of town this weekend, but it's plugged back in. Okay, well, I'm a little concerned about... I really do need to change the way I'm hardwired in because I think that there is a, a break in my, um, in my cable. And that might be what's causing the issue. Maybe. I don't know, man. <sighs> okay, you can hear me, right? You can see me, right? They could be Twitch being Twitch, but it has in the past been my, my computer, so, um, or my connection. Oh my gosh, sorry, I'm trying to get this. Well, we'll hope for the best, shall we? I guess I'm gonna have to, like, cut, download and cut and paste and put these things together. And, oh, we're so annoying. I'm having to do that. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. So. If, <laughs> if this game doesn't cause my disconnect a third time, it's the manipulator. So the manipulator has been getting into my computer wires or something and changing something to prevent me from remaining online, to try to prevent me from sharing my crackpot theory with you. Well, too bad, Manipulator. I will mini golf, and you can't stop me. You can't hold me back. <laughs> no, um, so, so we have reason to believe that the character we've been playing as is not Sissel. Sissel is not his name, nor is the man in red, the body that he had when he was alive. So there's a few possibilities here. Perhaps he is Sissel, but he's part of Sissel that got disconnected at some point. Or perhaps he's not actually a person's soul at all. Perhaps he's some sort of supernatural or extraterrestrial being. He could be, um, something he could be like the soul that was part of um the meteor that got 
launched out of the meteor and something summoned him into life this night and specifically this night and so Ray telling him that he's the the spirit of this body um, Ray might also be something extraterrestrial or supernatural we do know that extraterrestrial influences exist because we have this meteor right um so so all of that I think those are all pretty reasonable thoughts you know that's the sensible thing However, if we take at face value that we are, in fact, controlling the spirit of a dead person, a ghost doing tricks, and that this thing that we go into is actually the, the land of the dead or the world of the dead instead of, like, the world of the alien or something, which we, again, we, we can't assume that anything is exactly what we've been told it is. Um, but if it is true that we are playing as a ghost, well, there's a couple of options. This could be the ghost of somebody we haven't seen before. And it turns out that there's an entirely different character with an entirely different body and an entirely different life that is not in any way connected to the characters that we have spent 22 hours getting to know. Um, actually pretty close to that. I haven't done my, I haven't done my, like, rambling nearly as much in this game as usual. Um, but, uh, but it could be that there is a character that our ghost is the, the ghost of that we haven't encountered before. Or, or the ghost could be somebody who is connected to people that we have seen before in some way. Thus, uh, building on the emotional bonds that we have come to recognize between the characters and playing into our own emotional attachments to the cast of this game. Now, there is one character who has died and not been accounted for. Um, one character who has died and has not come back from the dead. One character who shows up in my phone book of people with some shadowing around the face and, 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 and some minimal information around like the description. The only dead person who has not come back from the dead to our knowledge, who has come up repeatedly in the story, who has plot significance and whose death is very strongly tied to major plot events and in fact underlies a lot of the emotional weight of the game and its story. Like, this game is really dumb and silly and ridiculous and it has a bunch of really ridiculous dum-dums on the cast, but what I love so much about it that I don't recall from my hazy memories of Ace Attorney what seems to make this more, more encore than that <laughs> is the melodrama and tragedy underpinning it and the fact that that melodrama and tra tragedy isn't played for laughs and we see the emotional ripple effect of that tragedy occurring that provides like gravitas to the silly story that happens. like. Jode is really cool and he gets to have really cool moments um, but what's really powerful about his story is his love for his daughter and his love for his wife and his his willingness to go to great lengths to protect his daughter um, no matter what that's what really really gets me there um, and if you think about it, there's there's a hole in the story. There's a hole in these characters' lives. Um, it starts when Sissel, the man in red, is killed, setting off a chain reaction. Well, is killed when he dies because it turns out Joe didn't actually shoot him. Um, but when he dies, that sets off a, a chain reaction of events that that causes 
internal strife for Jode and Cabanella specifically. Um, but what's the actual inciting incident of so much? It is the death of Jode's wife. Jode's wife, who obviously is the love of Jode's life. Cabanella's best friend's wife, who he's presumably very close to, and who he understands that it is on account of her and the child that Jode puts his entire life away. Um, obviously, this is literally Camila's mother. We care about Camila partly because we get to know Camila herself. Also, we bond with her doggy. And because we love Missile, we play as Missile, we have this strong connection for Missile, that reinforces our connection to Camila. Um, Camila is cared for by, um, by Lynn, who is basically like her big sister and, and sort of foster mom kind of figure. Um, so we love Lynn. Lynn is the second, I would say Lynn is the second most important character in the game after the character we've known as Sissel, our ghost. Um, we love, I don't have to explain why you love Lynn or how you get to know Lynn. Like the game makes that very clear. Lynn isn't Jode's coworker. Lynn is a close family friend who's looked up to Jode as a father figure. It stands to reason that Jode's wife might have been like a mother figure. And even if she didn't know Jode's wife as well, um, she's taking care of their daughter. She is tied to this story as well. So all of the characters who have been developed circle around this hole, this one loss. This is the inciting incident behind what happens to Jode and Camila and Lynn. Like, yes, there was what happened in Temsic Park, and that's really, really significant. Um, but... The other most significant moment is the death of the wife caused by the ghost that we now know to be Cecil, disconnected from his body. I have no idea how this would happen because I don't fully understand ghost logic yet <laughs> but I mean I will just straight up say in case like you, you're like gosh what is Lauren circling around to get to it stands to reason that the ghost that we're playing as could very well be the ghost of Jode's unnamed wife um and Camila's unnamed mother I don't think we have her name anyway She's the only dead person unaccounted for if it turns out that our ghost is actually that person. It would take advantage of all of these relationships that they have spent the entire game building up. It would also be a really interestingly complex thing because they, by making the killer and the true identity of your ghost different genders they're throwing you further off the trail like if if um you know just you're you're less likely they are going to assume that you are less likely to well provided this theory has any grounding in reality which it might not um but uh they might assume that you are, if they had the two ghosts um, have more in common, you might be like, wait a minute, I wonder if that's this person. Um, but the mom and Sissel, the man in red, don't have a lot in common that we see. Um, and it's, it's kind of weird to think of this character that we've played with this particular face having a completely different face that has meaning and name and personality and all of this stuff that is like an actual person um that would be very jarring but if you think about it like i don't remember if we know what the like the wife did the wife work with the cops i feel like she i feel like she did i feel like she worked at the station in some capacity um i don't know i don't know 
But it would mean that if we bring the wife back from the dead, and we are her, you know, if our ghost is her, we'll have an additional level of attachment. So as far as I can tell, if who we are playing as, if our main character is legitimately a ghost of a dead person, the only dead person that that person could be is that mother. What they have in common is that they're both bisexual. Maybe. Um, so, so that's possible. Um, but it's also possible that we are not playing as a ghost at all and that this is actually some sort of extraterrestrial supernatural thing that's happening. Maybe we are part of the spirit of the meteorite, etc., etc., and we are going to undo things to save the mother and we won't know the mother, but it's okay, we still want to save her because we love all the people who love her and we want to make them happy and fix their lives and bring her back to do that. And so even if we don't know her, um, we, we still care secondarily. So they could do that and have us and be like, okay, here's a character, you somebody you don't know, but you care about saving because you care about the people who love them and you're playing as somebody else and maybe we're going to send you back to space or something like that. I don't know. But if I were writing this in a vacuum, I would probably make it the mom. And then there would be some like clever hints that I've missed. Um, but I don't know. Anyway, that's, that's my idea. It might, it, I might be forgetting details or things that I've seen that are counter to it or things that are detailed that, um, things that, uh, that either back it up or contradict it. I don't know. I, I told you, I think it's a crackpot theory. I don't actually think that's what's happening because it feels... It feels like the sort of thing that you guys are going to be like, where did she even get that from? Which is why I took so long to explain it. Because, because it's not crazy, I tell you. <laughs> it just sounds crazy. But this game is crazy. So it's not crazy. The thing that the crazy game might do the crazy thing. <laughs> so I had to show my work. So even if you think it's just the stupidest idea you ever heard, you're like, well, at least I get where she comes from with that one. That's good enough for me. All right. <laughs> I do feel like I need to distinguish between the things where I'm like, this is legitimately what I think is going to happen versus this is what I would do versus this is some crazy idea that popped into my brain. I do think this is beyond some crazy idea that popped into my brain. I think this goes into what I would do. I should try writing a puzzle thing and see what happens someday. <laughs> because I just like solving things like this so much. Um, but I, I got a short story. I got a very positive, we'll, we'll most likely take it, revise and resubmit from an anthology. So that's really exciting. A story I wrote 10 years ago. That's exciting. We'll see if that happens. If it does get published, I will let you folks know if you want to read a thing that I wrote. Um, but again, it's 10 years old, so. Yeah, it's not quite, not quite congrats. It's not congrats until we get a contract signed. Um, and it is a revise and resubmit instead of a straight up acceptance, but they, they, they sounded like I have a likely chance, like a good chance, which is exciting. Um, so, so that's cool. That's cool. It's been a good month, okay? There have been some good things happening in my life this April, um, including seeing the eclipse yesterday. So shall we continue and play a video game? That's, that's, a, that's good. We like video games. Yeah. Okay. And finally, if you're going to be at VGM Con in two weeks, I think I'm actually going to be there. So we should say hello. <laughs> All right, let us uncover this mystery. Oh, oh, I got off the, uh, the screen because I had to, nope, wrong button. I had to deal with my ghost in the machine sabotaging me. All right, let's see what this ghost is tricking me all about. Oh, that's it, we changed the background. Look at my background here. 
I don't even have to recap what happened last time. I actually think I remember it pretty well. All right. It'd be really funny if the, the cool dude voice, the, I'm, a, I'm a noir detective voice that I'm doing. <laughs> Totally wrong. That would be amazing. I'm, I'm so, I don't know. I just, sometimes I come up with a pet theory and I just, and I just really like pet theories or, or my pet theory. And I'm just like, oh, but I really like this. If that somehow winds up being it, I'm going to be really excited. But this is not, I don't think this is a game that I've shared a brain cell with. If this was Hades, mark my words, is the Hades writers and I were on the same page so much. Um, but also they would be like, how do we do maximum family drama? And I'm like, I'm here for this. <sighs> okay. So he says, I better hurry over to Lynn. It's not safe to stay here. And I just don't have the power to stop that water from coming in. I'm in a torpedo. I'm in a transformer. Transformers, more that's the robots in disguise thing. Wheel, balancer, wheel, starter. I probably shouldn't mess around with things before I talk to Lynn. Medium fan. Oh, I can't get further. Okay, hold on. Each of these, each of the three machines is equipped with a fan. Now that I take a closer look, it appears there are two sizes of fans. Okay, fine. I guess I have to go over here. I'm sorry. I'm I'm at the point in this game where I just start singing along with background music. All right. Okay, I started that. Things are moving. Oh, the lights went out, but this machine apparently still works. Unfortunately, I guess it won't run for very long. But maybe I can use its movements to help me collate to help me create a path. All right. Ah, gear. Ah, gear. Ah, gear. Ah, piston. Sorry. I think I'm funny. Fire extinguisher. Small fan. Oh, flashlight. I love how Lynn is just in the water without thinking about it. All right, I'm going to do voices again. Are you ready? Lynn? Camila, you're awake. How do you feel? Oh, she looks so happy. She's like, yay, the little girl's okay. We're not dead. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I pointed that gun at you. Wait, how did she remember? They don't usually remember. They don't remember being possessed. That's like the whole thing. Lynn didn't remember shooting Sissel's body. Hmm. Don't worry about that. That wasn't you. Miss Camilla! Oh, Miss Lynn, you're here. Oh, poor Miss Camilla. Miss Lynn, what should we do? We have to get out of here before any more water comes in. Sissel should be along any second. I knew Sissy would come. And Missy is here too. <laughs> Sissel and missile rhyming has to be intentional. Oh man. That's really cute. Sissy and Missy. Adorable. Now, Chrono has a theory that Sissel is actually the spirit of another dog, but we'll see if that's true. 
The, the, the trick with that, Chrono, is that I don't think that another dog has been introduced or mentioned in the story. So that would be the soul of something or someone that we have not met before. And I feel like they're either going to have it not be the soul of anybody and it's going to be something else so that we care about that ghost on its own merit. Or it'll be the only person that has not been accounted for in the game that I can think of anyway. Is this a cat theory? Or it could be a cat, maybe. I'm so happy everybody's going to be with me now. Huh? Camila! Miss Camila! Triple exclamation point. I'll get you out of here. Determination. If it's the last thing I do, like it's like the, the stakes are actually high and as ridiculous and over the top as these characters are like the, the amount that they care and their intensity about caring is just, I really like it. I really like it. Oh, I think I'm going to cry. Or whimper, as the case may be. Thanks, Cicely, you're helping. I'd better set a signal to Lynn that I'm here before it's too late. Turn on the flashlight, I assume. I want to hear what she has to say. There we go. Oh, look at that flashlight. It's Cecil. He's here. I'm so glad. That they, I'm so glad that they can tell. Up you go. I'm glad she's not electrocuted. Yay. I'm glad you're here, Sissel. Sorry for the wait. It looks like this room is going to fill up with water fast. It's going to be a time segment. We'd be better get out that door as quick as we can. We won't be getting out that door, I'm afraid. The water pressure is too great already. I can't open it. What? What does water pressure mean? <laughs> this, see, this is a point in favor of him not being a person that, like, has had a human body and a human life. Like, that's the thing. If the memory loss thing is true, then the Jode's wife theory could be true. Otherwise, all of this, Sissel can't read, Sissel doesn't remember things, Sissel doesn't understand how humans live or what scientific principles in human terms mean. Um, it could be that he has no brain cell or it could be that he's like the the spirit of of the um the meteor it's the meteor um, some wolves hands do you do that thing ever where you're like trying to think of the words so you like gesture in a way that is reminiscent of what the thing that you're trying to talk about is i can't be the only one okay good excellent thank you Think of it as the force of the water holding the door closed. The water level keeps getting higher and higher in here. So the only way out of here is up, huh? Exactly. Okay, got it. Let's look for a path that goes up. Ah! Lynn. Okay, good. Hey, look at that ladder. I wonder if we can get it down somehow. Good idea. Let's try it. Leave it to me. Oh, and by the way, yes, I can't swim. Neither can Camila. <laughs> Minor detail. Don't you have any good news for me? Hmm, let me think about it. In the meantime, could you hurry, please? I love the art in this game so much. Let's talk to her. Because we can. There must be a switch or something somewhere that lowers the ladder. Provided the person who designed the sub didn't miscalculate the ladder length. I didn't even consider that possibility. He looks so stressed out. He's like, oh, no. And I have to warn you, I can't swim. Neither can Camila. Yeah, you already told me. <laughs> All right. Emergency light. Handle. There's somebody's glove up there. 
Okay, let's say this is all I can reach. So I'm gonna turn it. Oh, the glove moved. Fuse box. Switch. Distributing panel. Okay. Hook. Hold on. I'm gonna move the hook. I think. Oh, it got stuck. Okay. We can open the fuse box. Lower the switch. Let's open the fuse box. Ah, that's how I'm gonna open a door, huh? Let's try lowering the switch. Maybe that'll drop it down. Yes! You did it, Cecil! Thanks! She's so calm and cool. She's just like, well, he'll get us out of this. We'll work on it together. I'm granted, she was pretty confident in her own detective skills. Look at the careful way they've animated this to, to deal with the fact that she has this little girl on her back. They made this special custom animation. <gasps> oh, jeez. She said, eek. What was that? Looks like water seeping in isn't the only thing we have to worry about. Huh? Cecil, the flashlight doesn't work anymore. Hey, don't get mad at me. Maybe the contacts are bad or something. Hey, I know, you can fix it with your powers. Can I? Okay, now that's just taking things too far. Well, she seems to think that's gonna work, so. Well, let's give it a try. Oh, hey, great! Did you used to be an electrician in your past life or something? That's a cruel question, considering the circumstances. Now, all we have to do is get to that door and we're safe. Eek! Oh, <gasps> no! No, 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 no. No! No, 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 no. Oh, good, she's not dead. <sighs> what happened now? So there's a very dis distressing game from the Super Nintendo era called SOS, which is, I don't know that it's actually about the Titanic itself, but it's, it, I think it may be about a ship that's like the Titanic. Anyway, it's a sinking ship and you play as a character who, um, like, you have to try to get out of the ship before you sink and the ship is filled with other characters that you can try to help out or talk into joining you, um, try to conserve your strength and not get injured, switching between characters, I think. Um, but you can get you yourself and other people up to the top because um, the ship has turned all the way over so you can't just walk out on deck. You can get to the top and not be able to get out and you all die anyway. It is a really, really intense game. I did not play very far in it, but I was fascinated by it in the way that you get drawn in and fascinated by things that are not good for you sometimes. So I read a lot about it. It's fascinating. It has a ton of flags, a ton of possibilities, a lot of really, really difficult choices and hard to guess ways of unlocking the good ending. Um, and a lot of ways to die horribly. Um, it's very interesting. I had nightmares after I read about it. The Poseidon Adventure from 1972. Oh, interesting. Is it is it like actually like based on like the characters are the same as the characters in that movie? Anyway, it's an interesting thing. If that sounds like a good time, give it give it a go. I'm curious whether you'll actually have some luck making it work. Um, it seems like the sort of thing that would do extraordinarily well as an indie game in the modern era, but I don't know how well it did back then. I think it might have been a a cult classic, perhaps, because um, people have dug into it trying to figure out all of the different paths and permutations and things. I'm sorry, this is a total tangent during a really stressful part of the game, but there's a reason for that, which is to say that I 
deal with stressful parts of games by talking about something else <laughs> so that I don't have to deal with the stress. He might have noticed that's a Lauren coping mechanism. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, I would be very curious to hear if anybody plays that or has played that and has thoughts and experiences about it. All that to say, this shifting submarine makes me think of that. But I'm fine. It's fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine here. <laughs> it looks like the submarine decided to rear up on its hind legs. He has such a colorful way of talking sometimes. I can't believe we're all we're still okay after that fall. Either we're really lucky or we're dead and we just haven't realized it yet. Yeah, I, I'm surprised you're not dead, to be honest. Come on now, as if the latter could be true. I mean, it could be. Okay, you need to get out of there, honey. <gasps> no, 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 no. What now? The water sure is rising fast. But the music is so good. No, we're in a hurry. Sorry, Lynn. This is the final boss? This is the final boss theme. If we beat this game in time, we might go back and listen through the original soundtrack. Just to sum up, if you missed the intro spiel, um, the theories we're, we're talking about, it's the, the, the who or what is Sissel. Is he somehow like a spirit or soul connected to the oh, it's such a good song connected to the um, meteor or Lauren's pet theory that may be entirely unfounded is he Camila's mom and Joe's wife <laughs> the only dead person who hasn't been accounted for in the game I feel like that's a crackpot theory but I put it forth anyway that's what I would do <laughs> Gonna be a time segment, isn't this? I'm gonna really have a hard time with this, aren't I? Well, okay. Oh, that's such good music. The question that I then we'll find out shortly. So you can make a thing look, sound, and feel really intense, but actually not be super hard. So that your player feels awesome when they get through it. Um, and they think that they've overcome a big challenge without having because when you're dealing with something that's really like got a lot of tension It's very frustrating to keep trying and failing um, Beyond Good and Evil was extraordinary Like extraordinarily well done in that regard There are a lot of things that feel very cinematic and intense and difficult but They're actually really easy, but you don't realize they're easy because the presentation really sells how complicated and, and tricky it is We'll see what they've done. I, okay, Blues Thank you actually for that. I had forgotten. The majority of this game is time segments, isn't it? Now, and it is even time segments at the end of which people die if you don't do it right. So, it's literally the same. It's just that this one is presented as being intense instead of business as usual. Like, even the characters who die are usually like, can you just not let me die this time, please, man? And it's like really chill. So by and large, they're not as intense. But the music here sounds like a final boss. And it feels intense. And it feels claustrophobic. And it 
it's an it's a man versus nature conflict so it feels scarier than man versus ghost <laughs> or whatever god it's such good music Wait, the assassins were hired by the man in blue, or the blue, the blue man, I think. That was part of the contract with Sissel. Sissel wanted that to happen. But I don't think he's playing 5D chess and it's going to be revealed to not be evil. We'll see. We'll see. Put it aside, Lauren. Stop chewing on it. You have to save Lynn. I'm still, I'm still nervous about this. I'm stalling. I, I stall. I really, really stall. I could tell you stories about recent life events in which I waited until the absolute last second to actually deal with something because I was scared and it turned out fine. It was more inconvenient than I waited till the last second, but that's a thing that I do. <laughs> it's a thing that I do. All right. Back to the game. The water sure is rising fast. Come on. Oh! You'll just have to go up. Up to the top. Let's see how I can help with my ghost tricks. Yes! Well, well, I think I see a familiar flame over there. Cecil, there you are. Oh, good. How's it going? How is it going? I'd say it was going pretty badly. You do understand how dangerous the situation is, don't you? Of course, after all, just ask anybody who knows me how much I hate taking a bath. <laughs> Maybe he's been in danger of drowning before himself. I don't think... I mean, he is a little doggy, that's true, but... <laughs> you feel safer with Missile's presence, although I feel a bit of dread because I remember how much difficulty I had trying to use Missile's powers at the beginning. So I'm like, oh no, this is going to be needlessly complicated. I won't be able to wrap my head around it, but no, it's fine. It's fine. I have been trained to look for things that are similar shapes. Like the fan blades. Different sizes. Same shapes. Hmm. Okay, ready to create a path for these ladies? Of course! Okay, I can I can do nothing. <laughs> All right, doggy. <laughs> Sorry, doggy. Medium fan, shaft, pipe. We're just gonna take a look at things. Medium fan. Okay, so I could I could swap those. Transformer, torpedo. The torpedo and the transformer are not the same size. They're not the same shape. Starter. Wheel. Wheel. Those are not the same. Balancer. Large fan. Okay, hold on. Gear. Gear. Piston. Fire extinguisher. Wheel. Tiny fan. Pipe. I wonder if I'm going to be able to do something to get them up to the top. Sorry, we have to scope this out. Emergency light. Another pipe. There's the glove still. Uh, the glove is still obeying the laws of gravity. Switch. Fuse box. Oh, there's the hook that we couldn't do anything with before. Door. We've got handle. Emergency light. Monitor. Telephone. Oh, hello, telephone. Wheel. 
interesting. You gotta be careful to not. Okay. Okay, so I can't swap the wheel for anything. I think the only things that I can swap from the looks of it at this point. Yeah. We're gonna try that. I got no real reason for it, but we're gonna do it. Let's see what happens. I can't talk to her. I can't do anything. Nor can I turn on the flashlight. Okay, so she's got the flashlight. She's gonna look. Ah, oh, now I can go. Okay, thank you. So she held it out for me. That's actually really cool. Okay. So we're gonna switch over to him. What can he do? Sorry. This is gonna be slow going for me. Okay, operate. Hold on, we're gonna move the doggy away from here so that we can, okay. So what I can do, I can operate the starter, which makes things move a little bit. I can't go any further from there, okay. Okay, the starter appears to be the only thing I can do anything with. piston sticking out right in front of me. It's almost like they're taunting me. Maybe it's a challenge. It might be just that. Think you can climb them? Hmm. If I wasn't holding Camila, I could probably do it easily. Sissel, you, you, you're not telling Miss Lynn to leave poor Miss Camila behind, are you? <sighs> could you just be quiet for a minute, Miss Lynn? <laughs> I really love these characters so so much. I gotta admit, part of the reason why I would hope that S the Sissel is the mom theory is correct is because then, says that then my character can continue to hang out with the characters that I know and love. I'd be worried if this is an extraterrestrial power that he goes back into space and never sees them again. Wouldn't that be sad? I would be sad. I'd be sad for him. The rest of them will be okay. But they're very cute. Those pistons sure do look like they could be used to our advantage. I don't know what that just did. Oh god. Uh oh! The water is still rising! It's up to my knees! And it's freezing cold! Just hold on, we better create a path fast. Hang in there, Miss Lynn. Thanks, Missile. I don't know what to do here. pressuring me to climb them. Oh, I doubt they're doing that, Miss Lynn. Hmm, it looks like how much the pistons thrust out is related to how large the fans are. Hey, Sissel, my arms are full, but my legs are free. If you could just move these pistons so they're a little easier to climb, I think I could do it. Okay, so in order to do that, we need three different sizes of fans. Yes, I need to bring that little one down. Okay, got it. I am on it. I'm so on it right now. So on it, yeah, yeah, swap that. All right, nope, nope, we're gonna go up here, we're gonna go up here, no, it's cool, I saw it, I saw it, I found it, I found it. Yes, yes, that's right, yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, hold on. There, how about that? I did it, I did it. I did it! 
Wow, this is great! You made a staircase for me! You better hurry. I don't think that water is gonna wait for you. Come on! Okay. I like that she still goes up carefully. Like, they put a lot of love and care into the animations. Nope! Yep. Mm, jerk butts! Jerk butts! They're like, okay, you've moved on to the second stage. Oh, I have to switch the... Ouch! Okay, hold on. No, I can do this. Now the steam is getting in the way. It's too hot to get through. What? And there's no way to go around either. Think you can do something? Of course we can. We totally can. We have to. All right, little doggy, are you ready? I'm gonna get... Okay, little doggy. Come on, little doggy. Up we go. No. It's fine. Doesn't matter. All right, little doggy. Okay, we're gonna. I'm. I'm. Just, I just. I don't know how I'm gonna get up there. Oh, this isn't. This isn't for Sissel. This isn't Sissel's prop puzzle. Darn this thing called water! Look what it's done. Huh? Just a second ago, it was chilling me to the bone. And now it's hitting me as steam hot enough to melt a person. My boots and my coat are soaking wet. Water just pours out of them when I move. How dare that water treat you like that? Here, let me lap it all up for you. Oh. <laughs> They're like, Psst. This is a section for missile and missile alone. Hmm. You'd better not missile. It's salt water. It sounds like she's starting to get crabby. Achoo! Okay, okay, I'm working on it. Alright. Look at this! If I swap the pipes... It changes how the steam comes out, huh? Oh, I get it! Because the cracks in each pipe are different, right? So each pipe sprays out the steam in a different way, huh? I bet that will come in handy. This one right here, I want to be down there. No. I'm not sure what to do from here. Like, I know, I know, I know, I know, but here comes that water again. Oh, I wish I could drink it all up for you. No missile, it's too salty. Uh, I think the more relevant point is that he's dead, so he can't drink it. Whatever, just do something about the steam. Leave it to me, Miss Lynn. Thanks, missile. I just, I don't think there's one that doesn't spew out from the bottom. Unless... Sissel can't go anywhere or do anything. I don't know how I'm going to get up there. Short of, like... Okay. Okay. I can get up there. But how? Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, I can do something with the wheel. Okay. I hope I don't cause them to die. I'd be really sad. If I turn this wheel... Not that I can see all that well with all this steam here. Missile will switch the pipes around so you can get across. That's right. Don't give up, Miss Lynn. My back is really starting to hurt. Oh, wait, hold on. He's got a thought. 
So by closing this valve, I've shut off the steam flow to that first pipe. Oh! 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 Well, if that's the case... Oh shoot! Oh, we 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 died. <laughs> He's kind of whiny in his own way. You couldn't take a little warm mist. Hey, that was no warm mist. It was boiling hot steam. Which, by the way, steam will burn you. Do not mess with steam. Anyway, it looks like you're the key player for this one, missile. But I don't think my powers alone are going to be enough. Okay, good. That's nice of them to start me up here. Okay, so... Oh, it even leaves me with him up here. Oh, good. Okay, hold on. Okay. Okay, what are we looking at here? Something's not right here. down but it's this one that goes up do I have to swap these two I thought I swapped no but I swapped these two already ah ah because that one only is a little bit coming out okay. there how does that look it looks great all that horrible steam is cleared out of the way okay it's not far now try to move forward Yeah, she's moving carefully. That's good. Oh, jeez. Okay, I'm gonna have to drop that hook. Look up there. If I can just make it to that door, we can escape. Now, how in the world am I going to get up there? Don't yell at me. If you want to yell, you can yell at me. Thank you, Missile. Missile? How can I yell at you when you're so sweet about it? Uh, I think you just did. Let's look for something to pull Miss Lynn up with. Yes, something to whisk Miss Lynn up and glide her ever so gently to the top with. Hey, are you being sarcastic? All right, what do we got going on here? I don't, I don't think this is, I don't think this is the doggy's time to shine. So I'm gonna, gonna take it here with this friend. Okay, let's try this. Grab hold of that. All right, now this is what I'm talking about. Okay, raise away. Oh, wow. I didn't think he was gonna be able to lift her because he has strength limitations. But I guess in this case, it's not caring. He's using, like the thing works, oh my goodness. No pressure. God, look at how she's trying to hold that little girl. Sorry, I can't do it. Open it. Hurry. Is that any way to ask for something? Yeah, she's she's not being polite because she's absolutely terrified. So I have to point out that her boots don't have heels, which I appreciate. Okay. How do I open it? It's no use. I can't budge it. It must be stuck. Oh, no. This way! Who? Who? Jode? Eek! What 
just happened? I can't believe my eyes. Lynn and the little lady suddenly vanished, leaving only darkness and seawater. The submarine continues to sink down, down into the deep, deep sea. But I still want to try and make my way up as far as possible. I still want to head up to find a single ray of light, eh, ray? Light to illuminate the truth at the bottom of this deep, deep darkness. <sighs> okay, well, I'm glad that, that we got the girls out of there. Nick Picklebreath, you, most, you mostly missed me, like, going off for, like, ten minutes at the beginning about, like, my theories of, of, of who the ghost is. <laughs> and also... Also, the manipulator was messing with my computer, so I kept disconnecting. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is, like, I've I've had kind of speculations from Ray that what Ray tells, tells us isn't entirely truthful, and that we're not just ghosts from the dead who just died and will pass away within 24 hours, or less than 24 hours, or whatever. Um, oh, we have a mod. We've got a, we've got a spammer here. Thank you. Thank you, Luz. Um... Anyway, again, again the, the, so the long story short are, um, I, I hope you don't mind that I'm going to give my little theories as we keep going for like the folks that have dropped by and missed the very beginning. But the, the super quick, um, is that either, um, either Sissel, as we've known him, our ghost, either our ghost is in some way an extraterrestrial being who came in with the, um, with the meteor or my pet theory is that our ghost is actually the ghost of Joe's wife, <laughs> which I'm very excited about. I spent like 10 minutes explaining why I thought that so that even if you guys think I'm completely insane, you at least understand where I came from with it. Oh, anyway, the final struggle. I don't know if that's actually going to be final. Well, we'll see what happens from here. It was good music, though. No, no. No, no, I didn't. I do, I do want to save. I hit the wrong button. Yes, I want to continue playing. That's fine. Chapter 17. All right. Oh, it's such good music. I just love the music in this game so much. The upended submarine continues to sink, slowly but surely. A long, long journey to the bottom of the sea. Lynn and the little lady found the darkness and the salt water closing in on them. But at the very last second, something saved them. Now it looks down at them quietly. Wait. Wait, is this the other ghost? The actual Cecil's ghost? My head is filled with one giant question. What in the world is this thing? Is it Ray? I think it might be. Ray's pretty powerful. Oh, it's made itself into a person. Oh no, is it Sissel? Is it the other Sissel? The sunglasses make me think it's the other Sissel. Oh my god, Cecil, yeah. That's interesting that he chose to save them. So the sunglasses and the shape of the cone are enough to tell you who this probably is. So, because he doesn't have his body. <laughs> Let's see what he's up to. He says, I see you managed to survive, detective. Hey, you're... She can figure it out. He's used to inhabiting a body, so he has to give himself a body. Excuse my appearance. I seem to have lost my body. He turns to look at you! I hadn't realized, actually, until he did it the first time. The rest of my care, the, the rest of my friends also turn to look at the camera when they're talking to Sissel, to me, to my ghost. 
but it, it's not disconcerting when they do it so it never was jarring it never weirded me out but it bothers me when he does it oh and you there you all caps in red letters you're the ghost who's been saving Lynn all evening aren't you does he go on the drama queen scale maybe maybe but we'd have to have it be that expression and that might be a spoiler <laughs> to put on the drama queen scale to put the face that we never see on our sizzle you knew about me all along of course what else would explain all those unnatural things happening if you knew how come you didn't do anything about it all this time wait hold on actually that reminds me You'll be glad to know that Cavanella has found his place on the drama queen scale. It has been suggested that I move the five over some because it's getting crowded above that. So we might do that. <laughs> Cavanella, sorry, you are more dramatic than Kojima. Less dramatic than Liquid Snake. <laughs> Sorry. If you're not familiar with the drama queen scale, I feel like it's fairly self-explanatory. I still need to add some characters back from other games. Um, but yeah, I Kojima has to be. I was really proud of myself adding him. <laughs> I will warn you if you want to go back and watch my Metal Gear Solid stream, it's a it's an unusual one because I was playing it specifically to overcome some personal demons. So you get to see Lauren have like a little triggered flashback on stream at team time or two. It's a thing, it's a thing. But you know, I beat it. I made it through. I reclaimed that game. Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the drama queen, drama queen scale off for now. But when I get my um, buttons things, I'll make it so that I can turn on the drama queen scale at will. At will. So like anytime it comes up, I can just think there it is. Um, okay, anyway, tangent, sorry. <laughs> if you knew, how come you didn't do anything about it all this time? And how come you decided to save us all of a sudden? These are very good questions. That's why she's a detective. I thought you wanted to get revenge on us. Dot, dot, dot. I don't really know. Please, you gotta tell me. I need to know. Who am I? Who in the world are you? Cecil, look at you. What happened? I can't hold on to that image of myself any longer. That's really cool. You can't remember who you are? That's right. I came all this way tonight, trying to chase down my lost memory. For quite a bit of tonight, I thought I was you, Cecil. Cecil? My name isn't Cecil. I bet you'll remember really soon. Who you are, and who I am too. What? The man in front of me is not me. I'm even further away from the truth. Or maybe not. Something is stirring in my mind, a memory about to emerge. Or they could be two halves of the same coin or something like that, we'll see. I really like this song. A really like deep voiced piano so much do I know this man now that I've shed my image of myself I feel like I'm one step closer to the truth I like that he sits down he's so used to having a body 
They got us good. It's all over for this submarine. Its engine room is destroyed. There's a hole in the hull, and it's sinking as we speak. What are you doing here? I thought you had a deal with those people. They betrayed me. I was a fool to trust them. They already have what they wanted now. The Temsek fragments. I didn't know they had it all figured out. You mean they figured out the source of your powers? Yeah, that meteorite's radiation has two effects on living creatures. It gives power and time. If you don't mind, we'd like to hear more. That's true, we do have the ability to reset time. Really curious about this. Okay. Unless... Hum. Unless there is the man in the, the man in red and the meteorites and they got like swapped and mixed up somehow i don't know well, we'll see we'll see they've got they've got they've got their own stuff they're going with this the thing is i'm trying to speculate 100 percent with the pieces that i have in front of me and one thing that this game does is it does withhold some pieces or introduce things that you have no way of guessing um or that are very difficult, at least for me personally, to guess. Um, and so I can be like, this is what I would do with the pieces in front of me, but like either I'm overlooking because they haven't highlighted some other piece that I've seen, or they haven't given me a key piece to solve it. So let's see, the radiation's power effect. These 10 years, I've been watching that junkyard superintendent do his research. And I think I've kind of got some of it figured out. That's so interesting. He's been just hanging out watching that guy. Like, that's really interesting. We've got the blue time thing. The meteorite's radiation gives spirits special powers. Like possessing and manipulating objects. And in my case, swapping objects. Exactly. Apparently there are individual differences in the powers we get. And it seems these powers change as time goes by. They do? Yeah, my powers have changed over these past 10 years. At first I could only manipulate small living creatures. Now then, how do you suppose we got these powers? It's simple. It is? How then? In a nutshell, we died while exposed to the energy emitted by the meteorite. It's radiation. Oh my god. No, no, no. That's what does it? Dying while being exposed to the radiation? I mean, to be fair, um, Missile died in the park this most recent... Well, no... Yeah, missile died in the park, so. But the previous missile, the previous missile death didn't. The previous missile was, um, the previous missile death was in the, uh, wait, wait, no, but, but he didn't have powers then, right? He didn't have powers until he died in the park, so. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Well, then, then who, who else? Well, we'll see. On that day, 10 years ago, I don't know who's speaking. I guess this must be her. On that day, 10 years ago, Oh, no, that's him. On that day, ten years ago, a fragment of that meteorite pierced my heart and I died. So, of course, I received special powers. Hey, wait a minute! Is that how I got my powers, too? You know, you might be right. Aren't 
the Tumsic remnants still right there in that park at the bottom of the crater? You're right. So that must mean I must have died in the presence of the meteorite's radiation too. Okay, he, is he just going to be some random person? Oh, I can't think of anyone else they've mentioned. It, so they could also have done some really clever, tricky sleight of hand where they mentioned someone or something that died early on elsewhere in the story, and then they distract you from it sufficiently so that you, uh, so that you don't know... Or so you don't notice it, you don't think about it. And then it'll come back when, uh, like, like basically when they reveal it, you're like, oh shoot, that's right, they did that. I love doing that. Um, when I write, I love putting a thing in and then doing a sleight of hand to hide it. Um, it's really fun. Um, I've done that a bunch in, uh, in Darkness and Starlight. Which I'm trying really hard to finish this next chapter, but it's a really big deal chapter for me. Um, but, uh, there's things that, like, readers haven't caught at all that I'm like, I actually foreshadowed this, but that's fine. Um, it is really nice, and I've done that a bunch with some things that I've been writing in the past few years. Um, God, I want to get back to writing, and I'm going to. If I can get this short story that is that is revised and resubmitted, if I can get that published, that'd be a really nice boost to me. <laughs> It'd be nice to share stories with the world. All right, the radiation's time effect. Another effect the meteor the meteorite's radiation has on us is that it gives us time. Again, I think this time effect is centered around the theme of death, but it's not all that clear. So the fact that I can return to four minutes before a person's death is another effect of that meteorite? Dot, dot, dot. One of the characteristics of that meteorite is its ability to replay the moment of death. Replay the moment of death? Ah, oh, this is all so strange and confusing. I can't take it in. It makes about as much sense to me as anything else. Which is to say maybe not a lot. Yeah. Strange and confusing. That just about sums up the object that pierced my body that day. <laughs> this is trying, okay? I actually vaguely remember the soda mascot from Night in the Woods. It's been a while, though. Oh, man. I like video games. Thanks to that meteorite fragment, my very existence is a contradiction. What do you mean? contradictory existence. We'll get to revenge eventually. That day, when the fragment pierced my heart, I lost my life. However, because it remained inside of me, that fragment continued to constantly regenerate my body. In other words, my body was continuously cycling between the moments that separated my life and death. What? My body's vital function stopped ten years ago, but my body's time is perpetually stopped at the moment just before death. Time just stopped, huh? So I just simply existed, not really alive and not really dead. That pretty much sums up these last ten years for me, ever since that incident in the park. My body hasn't aged a day. My hair hasn't grown an inch. Come to think of it, that old pigeon guy mentioned something. He said he couldn't cut this guy's body with a scalpel. So I guess as soon as an incision was made, his body would be regenerated. Wow. Wait, but... They got... There was something. Was it that they got the, um... They got the uh, meteorite fragment out of him. Uh -huh. Okay. Revenge. Before I left this country, I wanted to do one thing. I wanted to get revenge on the people who stole our lives. Our lives? Our lives? As part of the deal, I made those guys promise to cooperate. There's a meaningful dot dot dot. You're keeping something from me, buddy. Cooperate? You mean the kidnapping? It all went fine. I manipulated the justice minister and made him issue the execution order. 
but I thought he might call off the execution at the last second. So that's why you wanted his daughter kidnapped. But they kidnapped the wrong girl. Little did I know, they had their own reasons for cooperating with me. Huh? Their objective was to wipe out everybody who had to do with Temsic. Detective Jode was one such person, so they were happy to cooperate. Inspector Cabanella and that junkyard super, they were slated to be wiped out too. And as it turns out, I was one of their targets as well. So they stole my Tumsic fragment and here I am. But they had one more final target. You, detective. Me? But she can't be dead because she has changed and grown. She was a little girl then, so it can't be her. Well, I mean, Jode was alive, too, so... One final target. If you weren't there in the park that day ten years ago, I never would have thought of doing something as stupid as taking a hostage. Okay, but I was just a little kid playing in the park. Right? Yeah, I know. Huh? Ten years later, and you'd become a detective looking into Jode's case. Tonight, I invited you to a quiet spot on the edge of town. It was a trap, you see. Huh. I told you who I was. You never saw my face that day ten years ago. So of course you didn't recognize me. Oh, he has long reach. <laughs> I guess he's really powerful because he was right next to it. So Sissel was my, my Sissel. I took possession of you to make you shoot me. Yeah, she's fighting it, see? Your subconscious resisted me. Such incredible power. It was the first time I wasn't able to control somebody completely. The aim was off and the first shot missed the mark. junkyard was equipped with security cameras. I knew you'd be wanted for murder. That was my plan anyway. But then the assassins. Yeah. So that wasn't part of his deal. But they had other ideas. They simply wanted you wiped out. But then... Something threw a big monkey wrench into their scheme. I showed up. I was supposed to meet up with them after that, but then something went wrong. What happened? My body disappeared. Aha, the inspector in white was responsible for that one. My precious bargaining chip was in that body. I had to get it back no matter what. That inspector caused me no end of trouble. But why were those people targeting me? I never even heard of the Temsic meteorite. 
because you were looking into the Joad case. They thought you would find out about Temsek sooner or later. Man. Yes, it's like, they're like, you're looking in the wrong direction, Lauren. There's something else you should be looking at. There's all these other questions you should be considering and, 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 and trying to figure out. Forgive me for being preoccupied with my character. I love him. I love that he's so used to having a body that he makes himself one. And it still kind of looks like him. And that's pretty much the whole story. The only thing left to do now is wait for water pressure to crush this submarine. No, you need to tell us who you meant by our... Our lives. Oh no! There are no cores that link from here to the water's surface. I have an idea. We hook up the phone line and... There are no communication cables down this deep. They meant for the submarine to be my coffin. A coffin for the dead. There's no escape. I think I kind of understand now. What you've been feeling these ten years. You what? I love Lynn. I love Lynn. She's going to have sympathy and compassion for this man despite everything he's put her and the people she loves through. This feeling, cut off from the world, all alone in a submarine, sinking slowly toward the bottom of an endless sea. This must be how you felt all along. Dot, dot, dot. There's a little girl. Lynn? Camilla! Is it true? We're stuck here? What? Oh, uh... If my dad... If my dad was here, I bet he'd save us. Oh. oh, Camila, I'm so sorry. That's a lot of emotion conveyed there. Hmm, that's funny. What is it, Sissel? There's something I don't understand. Why would they go to all the trouble of detaching the control room? What? Why didn't they just steal the Temsic fragment and escape if that's what they wanted? Why did they have to jettison your body off into the sea? Hmm, that's a good question. But I guess it doesn't matter why now. We'll never find it again. We have no idea where it was launched to. Wait a minute! Yes, we do! This will tell us where Detective Jode is. Just such good music. That present from the inspector in white. That's right! Detective Jode told me to hold on to it for him. And the bullet is still in this person's body in the command room, right? This person. So he's not Sissel. But the commander called him Sissel. Then we should be able to tell exactly where it is with this. But, but, even if we did find out where it is, how do we get there? We should be able to figure something out between the three of us. With our powers. Right, Miss Lynn? Right. Oh, and wait a minute. What about a torpedo? A torpedo? In any case, it's way too early to give up. Hmm, it looks like Detective Joad is our last hope. Come on, let's get started! <laughs> I 
I can't talk to him. So my dad isn't here on the submarine? Don't worry. We're going to get we're going to go get him right now. Okay. I hope I didn't hurt Lynn's feelings, but I said about my dad saving us if he was here. Oh, don't worry about that! Comments like that just roll right off Miss Lynn's back. She's really thick skinned. Out. I'm going to start being tougher too. I want to make my dad proud of me. Miss Camila! I'm sure your dad is very proud of you, Camila. Alright. So his shell is definitely there in the command room, right? Just without the fragments? It's there, yeah, but I don't know about calling it a shell. Detective Jode's watch will tell us exactly where it is. Right, he said it was a radio receiver, didn't he? There might still be another torpedo on this submarine. If we use it, we can get to Detective Jode. That's a brilliant plan, Detective. You think so? <laughs> So what are you going to do? Ride on the top of the torpedo? Yeah, like, what are we going to do with the living people? Like, the souls can all just kind of float around, but what are we going to do with the, the, the fleshly folks? <laughs> of course not! You guys are going to go! Darn, I kind of wanted to see that. <laughs> Did you want to see me drown? No, I've already seen that, thanks. The control panel. Okay, what do we do now? We go find the command room that was launched somewhere into the sea. What? How? Just to let you know, I don't like water very much. According to Lynn, the key to our plan is a torpedo. Kind of a missile. Oh, look at that. He's, he's, he's giving missile, like, a pep talk. It's named for you, buddy. You'll be fine. Missile? You have a missile right here. I don't think she's talking about that kind of a missile. Now then, where did we see another miss torpedo? Oh, hey. <laughs> Why is this machine shoving grapes at me? <laughs> Cecil stands for sea missile. Yes, there we go. Well, this looks like the private cabin of the top officer, doesn't it? This machine is probably for feeding him grapes while he lies in bed. <laughs> oh, it sounds heavenly. I've been thinking about this for a while now. But don't you think that country's use of technology is just a little off? Everything about them feels weird is the guy who made a deal with said country. Anyway, it looks like the arm of this machine is a bit busted. Okay. But it lets me connect to the telephone. Which I guess I'm going to have to use to go to the other room. Oh. Grapes are poisonous for dogs? Okay, I didn't know that. see if she's got anything else to say. No, okay. So I don't I don't get to talk to the other guy, just Sussle. Alright, we're gonna dial here. Or oh I don't get to switch to missile. Hmm. The phone line to the engine room isn't working right now. All that water probably damaged the line. I guess I don't need to go back there anyway. I have to try to go where I'm not supposed to go, or rather I have to not go where I'm supposed to go, right? Right, right. The torpedo room, huh? There might be another torpedo left there. I'll go check it out. To be fair, if I'm looking for a torpedo, the torpedo room is a pretty good choice, don't you think? <laughs> oh, I get it! You're going to use a missile to ram the control room! Well, I don't know about Ram. We don't want to blow Detective Jode up. But something like that. We'll climb up to the torpedo room, too. Up is definitely safer. Okay, I'll see you there, then. 
That's right, because they can't, like, I think Sissel, my Sissel, is the only one who can go through the telephone line. It looks like the torpedoes can be launched manually with these switches. How did you get there? There are two tubes, so there should be one more left. I guess the first thing we have to do is load it into the tube. When it comes to missiles, you can count on me! Alright. Oh, I guess that's true. Camila is, is, is conscious and moving around, so that does make Lynn's life a little easier. She doesn't have to carry her. And, and yeah, maybe Cecil helped. The thing is, I would have liked to see Cecil help them up. Like, that would have been a... That would have been a cool bit of, like, just character moment... A character moment that makes us... Like, we can't help but get more attached to him because we're watching him save our friends. Okay. I'll enter the coordinates of the command room into the torpedo. And I just turned on the backup power. We ought to be able to use the switches now. Okay, let's try it. Good luck! How's it going there? I'm just calculating the command room's coordinates now. I have to put in a slight offset, though. Don't want to blow it up. I'm sure Detective Jode would appreciate that. <laughs> Well, leave this to me. Good luck with loading the missile. Okay, thanks. And yet, like, they did show um, Cecil save them earlier, but if we had seen, like, a, like a, a kind of collaboration between them and seen him continually put more effort to save them, it would have continued to build our attachment to him, which is interesting. Oh, no, I can't talk to Camila. Oh, no. There's a valve, a switch. Oh! What will happen to these two ladies? I think that's up to us and our powers. What? This is no time to be standing around unsure of ourselves. Will you lend me your strength missile? Me? Of course I will. Count on it. Haha, -ha. there we go. Valve, telephone. Emergency light. Baseball. Oh, it's all this stuff. Waste basket. You remember this? We did this. This is a thing we did. Okay, scoot over there. Please help my dad, sissy. I'll be okay here. I'm not scared. Leave it to me, Camila. We'll be back with your father to save you. I promise. Wait a minute, Cecil! What is it? What you just said! I wanted to say that! Thank you, Missile. We can do it! I know we can! I'm really not sure how to load a missile. Torpedo. Oh. Cleared the same, same challenge. Swapped 44 things. Unlocked the song, same, same. And the same, same background. Okay. Well, I swapped a bunch of things. I don't know whether they did anything, but I swapped them. do anything. This switch won't budge. Maybe it's broken? But I don't think the entire device is broken, though. It would probably work just fine if only I could move this switch. We'll just have to find a way to move it somehow. But I can't do it with my powers alone. Yes. Yes, yes. I get it. I get it. All right. Oh, 
All right. <laughs> all right. I, I swapped a bunch of unnecessary things. It's all fine. There we go. That torpedo looks serviceable. I'll sit on this end too. But something's odd. What is? The command room. It looks like it's slowly sinking. Sinking? Yeah, like it's completely run out of power. I wonder what happened. I don't know, but I guess I'll find out. Perhaps I'll have to go back four minutes in time to prevent that, whatever that is from happening because somebody has died in there? Maybe. Right, okay, hop into the missile. I'll launch it for you. Okay, thanks. All right, go ahead and hop into that missile. No time to lose. All right, I'm going. That control room is still sinking. I'm worried. What could be happening, I wonder? I'm worried too. I guess I better hurry. Like, I love that he cares so much. What will happen to- Okay, we've already had this. I can't talk to her. I've already set the torpedo's cur course. Curse? I've already set the torpedo's course. Hopefully no torpedo curse. It'll head towards the command room where Detective Jode is. Twelve seconds after launching, it'll pass by the command room for an instant. That instant will be your window of opportunity to jump over to the command room. Okay, got it. And then we'll find a way to come back and save you. That'll probably be my last task tonight. Because my ghost supposedly will disappear. Perhaps that is... But... Who else died tonight? I don't understand. Well, we'll find out. Just hold on until we get back. Okay, come on, missile. Dot, dot, dot. Missile? I... I'm sorry. I can't go. What? I just can't. How could I leave? I can't leave Miss Lynn and Miss Camilla behind. Yeah, that figures. I can't do it. That That is very in character. Missile. I swapped the switches so the missile can be launched. You'll have to do the rest, Sissel. I can't do it either. I can't ask Miss Gold Missile to come with me after that. I understand exactly how he feels. Because I don't want to leave them either. Yeah. I want you to go, Missile. What? But, Miss Lynn! You staying here won't change our fate. But if you go with Sissel, you might be able to make something happen. And that's our only hope. But what if that something doesn't happen? I'll never be able to see you again. Never ever again. Even I can understand that. I, I couldn't stand that. Don't worry, Missile. Miss Camilla? I just know you and Sissy can make something happen. I believe in you. I'll be right here waiting for you. We'll see each other then. Don't worry. Oh my gosh, the doggy gets a pep talk. Miss Camilla! Oh, That's a good boy, Missile. That's really cute. And I love this, like, this is the in-character thing to do. Like, it makes, like, all of these, I'm like, oh, of course that's what you would say. Of course that's what you would do. Like, this is all very, like, I love that I've gotten to know all of these people and dogs as well as I have. I'm a little worried that they're gonna like have Missile sacrifice himself to save everybody. Um, but hopefully this isn't that kind of a game. I don't think it is. But we'll see. That's a good boy, Missile. 
Now, are you ready? Remember, it's 12 seconds after I throw this switch. We're ready. Sissel? Yes? We never found out who you really were. But that doesn't matter now. Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe we never find out and it doesn't matter who he was. What matters is who he is now. That would be an acceptable direction for them to go. All I know is I'm truly glad I met you tonight. Thank you for everything. And I'm glad I met you, detective. But we're going to see each other again, right, sissy? Right, missile? That's right. We promise, little lady. Of course we will! I'll never forget you, no matter what happens. Here goes, then. Good luck, friend. Yeah, I think he, maybe he's just a nobody. Maybe he's just somebody randomly who, who got affected by the, by the meteor fragment. That would be interesting. I thought that was the switch that couldn't be flipped. That's fine. Oh, he couldn't do it. But she could do it or something. I don't know. These 12 seconds are lasting an eternity. I strive to think of a way to save Lynn and the little lady the whole time. But how can a ray of light, of hope, reach this far down into the deep sea? Before I can think of an answer, the 12 seconds are up. Once again, we've got Ray, who is a lamp on the mind. Like, who was he? Oh, there's this other guy there. Look at that. Oh, that was cool. Oh, that was cool. Yeah, Jode is dead. I figured. I figured that would be what happened here. Detective Jode. I bet that big masked man did this. I'm going to bite him. All right, Missile. You better not. You might break your teeth. The command room has lost power and is sinking. So I wonder what this masked man is going to do. Or is he like a robot or something? Let's talk to Detective Jode. Maybe he actually, maybe this guy has like an escape patch or something like that. So he's like, I'll kill these two and then I'll be fine. There's another core in the body. Bonnie wouldn't have died before because it had the meteorite fragment in it. Now the body has actually died because the fragment has been removed. But that's not actually my body. Or maybe, again, there was something about the meteorite fragment that was sentient along with the owner of the body that was sentient and maybe we got mixed up i don't know how that would work that would require knowledge that i don't have whether because the game hasn't given it to me or because i've forgotten it either of which is quite possible at this point interesting but somebody's in there now that's what a core is a core means somebody is in there 
And if it's not me, and it's not Sussel, who is it? Is Sussel the meteorite fragment? And this is another, this is the actual resident of that body finally able to be himself? And if so, what does that mean for me? Or is that me? And that is my body after all. And that is who I am after all. And Sussel is the meteorite fragment in some capacity. I don't know, I'm sorry. I don't know. I genuinely don't know who or what that is. These are just some random guesses that I am slapping together because they're floating around, detached from everything in my head. Well, are you ready to find out? Because we're gonna do that. We're gonna talk to the detective, but then we're gonna talk to whoever that is. <laughs> what do you mean my theories spiral and spiral because I don't want to repeat myself? I definitely have repeated myself a number of times. Like for me, especially because this game is a puzzle and a mystery to solve, I, I want to try to put it together. And so every time like I get a little tiny piece of something, it's like you get a it's like you've got a puzzle and you get a new piece and you go around trying to figure out if it fits in any of the other places that you've got to fit it. And if you've got like a bunch of different pieces, like then you can start taking a shape. But even if you don't, like if you, you you keep trying, you keep trying, you keep seeing. Um and I, I just, I cannot resist the temptation to see, can I fit this piece anywhere? And it has nothing to do with repeating myself or not repeating myself because I absolutely do repeat myself in the process of trying to fit that puzzle piece into things. And sometimes I'm still stuck on my same idea. I'm pretty sure my like, um, dead mom theory is not correct. Which I did say it was a crackpot theory, and I think that's probably true, but it would have been interesting. But I just, I just don't know. I don't know, and I think they're gonna pull something out here that I don't have access to that's gonna make sense once they give it to me, and I'm gonna be like, oh, snap! It's gonna be very exciting, and I'm excited to get there, so. Sorry for the wait, Detective Jode. Who are you? Because <laughs> he doesn't recognize me because I don't have that face. Are you? Sissel, please excuse my appearance. I can't believe you made it here. He does figure me out. Okay. How is Camila? And what about Lynn? Oh my God, what a, what a dad. He's such a dad, I love it. Well, it's kind of a long story. I told Detective Jode about everything that happened on the submarine Yunoa. I'm sure the name Yunoa has some sort of significance. So the submarine is badly damaged? Why would he do that to his own submarine? Dad is very unhappy right now. Dad is worried. I wish I knew. I know the answer to that one. Oh, it's because he's afraid of my powers. You? You followed us? I didn't even notice. It's been ten long years, Detective Jode. Dot, dot, dot. Are you... Yomiel? Dot, dot, dot. Wait. So you remember me, do you? How could I possibly forget? So that's your real name, huh? Yomiel? That's right. 
those people on the Yonoa were calling you Sissel. That's just an alias I was using for my deal with them. I didn't see any need to tell them my real name. Could you do me a favor? Would you let me ask you some questions? I've been trying to find out my true identity all night. Sure, go ahead. I'm sure there's plenty we can still tell you. Right, Detective Jode? Right. Real motive for revenge? Oh, there's something that they've withheld. Okay. All right. That's fair. About Yomiel, that sounds like a, an, an angel name of some sort, you know? Ten years ago, you were a top systems engineer, weren't you? That's true. We don't know the details of why he was under arrest, I don't think. Just that Jode made some really poor decisions. Systems engineer? What's that? Missiles, like, in case any of you playing this game are children for some reason, don't know what any of these terms mean. The dog is here. The dog's got your back. By the way, I'm a top Pomeranian, you know. I'm pretty sure this game has had an influence on Toby Fox. Aren't we? <laughs> I love this little dum-dum. He's so cute. I assume that there's a number of people out there who have named their dogs Missile after the top Pomeranian number one dog. <laughs> it's really cute. And again, this is a little bit of levity. This game is masterfully written. Everything about this game is extraordinarily intentionally designed. And so if you are a young little dog yourself playing a gong playing a game and being moved by an experience, one of the lessons you could take away from this game is how to balance absurdity and comedy with drama and pathos. How to imbue even your most ridiculous characters with a hearty helping of compassion and humanity. Wouldn't you say? Anyway, I'm, I'm a Toby Fox game enthusiast, so. <laughs> well, it's kind of hard to explain to a dog, but it's a person who's good at using computers. <laughs> Dog. And I don't mean to brag, but I was one of the best in the industry. That's how I got roped into joining that project. That project, huh? Project. What project? <laughs> Thanks, Sissel. Or not, Sissel. Whatever you are. <laughs> Whoever you are. Mystery. It was a project aimed at reorganizing the nation's top secret information. That's why you had... See, I assumed that when he had the people start, like, shouting top secret information in their songs and stuff like that, I assumed that was information he gathered after he was dead. But I assumed wrong. Nice. The goal was to build a new system using multi-dimensional programming theory. Okay, so are we talking like 3D or are we talking about like alternate universes here? Because like, that <laughs> can go anywhere. I was asked to join the project by an agent of the government. It doesn't sound like something a top Pomeranian would know anything about. To me, it just sounded like another challenging job. However... This project was also the target of a secret plot. Okay, so I couldn't have predicted everything. 
because I didn't know the existence of this. That is very fun. Well, I came up with the fun theory with the facts that I had available <laughs> and several sub theories and alternative theories. I had fun. I really enjoy doing that and I enjoy revising it every time. I bet you can imagine the kind of crime the nation's top secrets might attract. I never thought for the life of me I'd ever have to deal with spies. It was never made public, but every organization in the country moved on this one. Do they mean organized crime? And then one day, the name of a certain programmer emerged as a suspect. I was the guy who built the core of the system. The police arrested you and then that incident happened. He escaped from the interrogation room and took little Lynn as a hostage. It's nice of them to put that in parentheses so that I know that it's my guy talking. By the way, Detective Jode, when was it that I was proven innocent? About six months after your death. I'm so sorry, Yomiel. Real motive for revenge, huh? Tell me more. Ten years ago. Meteor. Bam! My soul was split from my body and I lost everything. I was sealed in eternal darkness. I existed in this world, no question about that. But nobody noticed my presence. What good were my powers? They didn't help anybody. Not even the passage of time could heal my pain. In fact, it only made it worse. I wanted to disappear, but I wasn't even allowed to do that. The way Lynn described it is exactly right. Sinking slowly toward the bottom of an endless sea. An overwhelming feeling of loneliness and despair. And I wanted all of you to suffer what I was suffering. And so that's why you murdered Alma. That's right. I wanted you to know what it was like to lose everything you cared about. I wanted you to feel the same pain I felt. What? Dot, dot, dot. It was the twisted wish of a mind poisoned by infinite loneliness. Even our antagonists are human. And people who do terrible things are often pushed to do so by terrible circumstances. Oh, man. We've had Joe's wife name. I've, I've, I've heard the name Alma before. I just forgot it because my memory is a sieve. Because people crack. Like, there's a reason why solitary confinement is as controversial as it is. And by controversial, I mean it shouldn't happen. I mean, it shouldn't exist. I mean, it should not be a thing. And yet it continues to be used as a form of punishment. Absolute isolation is one of the worst things that can be done to a person. On a smaller scale right now, so many of us are dealing with massive amounts of loneliness. And it's devastating, absolutely devastating. The number of people that I encounter, especially in the wake of the pandemic, who have been struggling so much with feeling isolated, feeling alone, feeling like there's no hope because of the loneliness. Like, it is so widespread and absolutely devastating. And it's something that I wish that 
we could do something about because it hurts so many people so much. So I'm glad that this game took the time to humanize this character before we are given an explanation that makes him more sympathetic. We already have seen goodness in him. We've already come to view him as somebody who has allied himself with us and shown compassion. So that when he says, yeah, I did some really awful things because I was really messed up. You can see that he is not the sum total of his cruelty. He's more than that. This is good characterization. This is good storytelling. This is good writing. This is good pacing. This is good development. I can see the influence of this character and the way this is handled all over Toby Fox's writing, in my opinion. I, I could be wrong, but I feel like this would have been actually a very formative experience. Um, because imagine being entirely alone for 10 years, seeing and witnessing and never being able to interact with anyone. Because even a fairly isolated programmer, which we don't know that he was, people still have human connections. They still have people they care about. And yes, Violet Square, yes, that is correct. <laughs> I feel like you can see some thematic influence and inspiration there. If you haven't, if you haven't played Undertale, my apologies, but I feel like you can see a really strong influence from this game on that game. Maybe. I <laughs> anyway. Um, okay, so he's Yomiel, not subtle. <laughs> He's got a real name. No, I really like him as a character and everything about him is so effective. Yeah, no, I really like him. Cecil Yomiel. <laughs> yes, that's a full name. This is really good and I really like it. And then, as I was plotting my revenge, I had an idea. I came up with a plan to use these powers of mine to make a deal. But what benefit could there possibly be to you? Unless he was going to be like, allow me to die. There's something I just don't understand about that deal. I'm sure your powers would be very valuable to them. But what would you get out of the deal? the question the, the, I feel like this game is, is a very for me it feels very well written and for me it feels like it's a very good fit for like ah yes the way I play games and think about things because I ask the question and the characters are asking the same question which means that they are setting me up to have that question in my mind already which is which is a good sign that means that they're doing their job a new life life I asked them for two conditions. Number one was that they helped me with my revenge plot. And the second was a rebirth for me. How? Oh, Toby Fox played Ghost Trick just a few months before Undertale released? Okay, well, in that case, I could be wrong and it could just be that he played the game and it resonated with him because it had themes that were, inter that were similar to what he was already exploring. Um that can happen and then you find it and it's like discovering a like soul sibling i've had that happen there's a there's a writer whose fiction is so much like mine that everybody assumed that i was inspired by him and i'd never even heard of him before so then i finally read him and i was like oh that's eerie that's eerie <laughs> It's an interesting experience. And I started writing approximately 20 years too late <laughs> to be in the genre that I belong in. Um, so how on earth would Yomiel get a rebirth? Is their technology so advanced that they can do something like that, I wonder? Rebirth. A new beginning, eh? 
Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they would just allow his his body piloted by him to act as a person in the world instead of having to be an outsider. Ah. I didn't care if it was a fake life, an artificial life. I just wanted a physical receptacle for my soul, a name, an identity, an everyday life. I wanted to grow old in a society that would accept me. And finally, I wanted to die surrounded by a loving family. <sighs> That's the kind of life I asked them for. A completely man-made life. That's right. I knew I couldn't hope for anything more than that. To make it all come true, I knew it would take a lot of money and a lot of power. That's why I decided to ask a national government to help me. And their response in the end was betrayal. That's so interesting. He's like, allow me to have a false experience, but still an experience of life and love, and then let me die. And in exchange, I will give you what you want. All right. They were making their moves much more carefully than I suspected. They sent spies to this country and researched my powers on their own. And they even figured out what Tamsik was all about. And you had no idea they were doing all this. Not at all. I was a fool. So then... Why did they go to all the trouble of making a deal with you? Why didn't they just steal a hunk of the Temsic meteorite from the park? They couldn't. Huh? After the manipulator incidents, research was conducted in this country too. A report was submitted to the government about the source of the manipulator's power. <laughs> By Inspector Cavanella and the old pigeon guy, eh? At first, the government didn't believe the report. But then they decided to put the park under surveillance, just in case. Surveillance, huh? It just looks like an ordinary peaceful park, but there are armed agents there at all times. Don't tell me that odd leaflet guy is one of them. <sighs> oh my god, are you serious? Oh, okay. <laughs> no, not him. He's just a plain old odd person. That's Brilliant! That's brilliant! Oh my god! <laughs> that park is like a silent battlefield on an international scale. So that's why they couldn't steal the Temsic meteorite. And lately, under the pretense of building a housing site, they've been working on a plan to destroy that park in order to secure the Temsic meteorite. So that's it, eh? So the upshot of your grand deal was this, eh? Yeah, it's the ending I deserve. But at least there's one thing you must be happy about. What's that? You've managed to seal me away at the bottom of the sea forever. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah, but now that I'm not lonely, I don't actually want that. Well, shall we get started? Started with what? Bringing Detective Jode back to life, of course. What? What good will that do now? But we promised! We promised Miss Lynn and Miss Camilla we'd save them! And we can't do that without you, Detective Jode. Dot, dot, dot. I've been guided by fate tonight to this place. I won't give up now. All right, fine. <laughs> fine! Don't let me die tragically again. <laughs> 
Let's see where it leads us. Dot, dot, dot. Here we go then, back to four minutes before your death. Okay, all right, let's see what happens. Time to save this his life. Yes, that's right, that's what we're doing. So, where are we headed? I love his like, hey, I'm casual, I'm chatting. We are not headed anywhere, detective. What? There was only enough fuel on board to launch us away, detective. We will run out soon and that will be our destination, detective. What are you talking about? That would mean that you're trapped here too. Are you a robot? Yep, you're a robot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's why he's weirdly good at the technology. By the way, I am not human, detective. He spins his head on his finger like a basketball. Why? Why? I am a remote-controlled robot, detective. What? Your country's use of technology is just plain off. We get that a lot, detective. Why would you go to all the trouble to do this? That's nothing but a shell there. It's hardly a threat anymore. Commander Sith likes to provide against any possibility, no matter how small, detective. Possibility? What are you talking about? I like that he's standing in, like, battle mode. Like, Jode is ready for whatever's gonna go down here. There is no need for you to know, Detective. I certainly will not monologue about it like a good villain. No. <laughs> oh, that's really straightforward. Now it is time to say goodbye, Detective. In the end, your fate remains the same, it seems, detective. Urgh. Camila, forgive me. Oh, it's a machine gun. Okay, well, I guess that's effective. It isn't over yet. It isn't? Remember what that big masked man said? Any possibility, no matter how small. Because they knew we were going to come for them. Yeah. Do you notice in the left-hand corner, by the way, there's the commander guy, and he's doing the objection pose. Well, I object to you, sir. I object to your very existence. Or at least to your crime and your evil. Evilness. Evilry? Yeah. <laughs> Your villainy, that's good, that's a better word. We'll pretend I said villainy. <laughs> I'm good at words. All right. And you'll notice every single painting in this room, every single picture in this room is a portrait of him in some capacity. What a self-centered person. Apparently his name Sith in Japanese is actually like, an archaic phrasing or an archaic spelling similar to the archaic word for death or something like that. But they they translated it. So it's I don't know. No, um there's actually uh, a couple of videos back as somebody just left our, our translator friend. Our, who, hello, if you're watching this on YouTube, that's right, we're talking about you. Um, uh, who, who makes who makes translator's notes? Um, that's why I asked these questions, expecting they'll get answered. Actually, just explained and said what the words were. So if you go, Shisu, that's it. Okay. Um, but apparently the word is pronounced differently these days. So. Yeah, Commander Death, D-E-T-H. That, that could make sense. But I think they might have wanted to be subtle about it. 
Yes, okay, yes, that's that's what that's what the comment was saying. That's what he was saying. That instead of she sue, it's now she knew. So yeah. Oh, okay. Lost in localization has okay, well I guess that figures. That's tomato, right? Maybe I'll take a look at that, but I've been getting some explanations along the way. Um, you can always count on Tomato to do a good job. Okay. Any possibility, no matter how small. Possibility. In other words, there must be a chance here somewhere. The possibility of turning the situation around. Dot, dot, dot. It's fun that I've now gone back to when I see that guy's face, I'm like, oh, it's a friend again. Okay. So where are we headed? Okay. Okay. Huh? What is it, detective? Look at Yomiel's shell. There's no aura emanating from his body. Of course there isn't. The Temsic fragment is gone. Could this change in his shell give us some kind of lead? Can we animate that? Instead, I'm dot dot dotting, or he's dot dot dotting. I figured it out. I know what this possibility, no matter how small, is that they are afraid of. What is it? My time was perpetually stopped thanks to the power of Temsic. His body cycled between the moments that separated his life and death. Right, but not anymore. The Temsic fragment has been taken away. Exactly. So what does that mean? I get it. Your body won't come back to life anymore. So we're going to startle them. The moment the Chemsic fragment was removed, my shell became a regular corpse. So let's see. That means we can go back. Back to four minutes before your death? I told you we were gonna do that at some point! I just had no idea they were gonna set that up. I thought we were gonna have to like piggyback. Oh man! But wait a minute! Exactly when is that death? Well, I thought that there was going to be, like, some way of jumping through time and hitting a few key points or something. I wasn't sure. I really wasn't sure. I don't know if this is actually a difficult one to guess. I don't know that I won a prize for it, but... <laughs> That's simple. We'll find out when we get there! Let's move! We've been doing time travel this entire game. They're going to follow the rules of the time travel that they've created so far the entire game. And yes, Lynn does take after Jode. Act first, ask questions later. As Cabanella tells us, I believe. <laughs> I feel like the thing is, okay, I am not normally the hugest fan of undo the whole story stories necessarily. And I'm not always and frequently not a fan of time travel. Um, although I have friends who just really love time travel stories. So I understand that there's a big appeal for it. 
Um, the thing is, this entire game has been setting up undoing this. This entire game has been laying the groundwork for them to do exactly what we're about to do. Everything they've done, everything they've established is built around it. The same way that a story with an escort mission, the, the same way that, that gameplay that has an escort mission thrown into it is frequently frustrating and annoying, but gameplay built around an escort mission can be a very satisfying experience. Take Resident Evil 4 or Ico. Um, this entire game has intended to do this. All of the deaths, including, yes, as Victor Ghost says, there have been times that we have un undone one death by going back, to, like piggybacking from that onto a previous death. And by by preventing that previous death, it's not there's not even a risk of that second death. Um, like, we know the rules of undoing it is that we come back to the path, or we come back to the present afterwards, and everybody who was actively involved specifically in the process of that death has memories of it and retains those memories. Like that's already been established very cleanly and very clearly. It's not that it's not that the entire universe will be aware that things have changed, but the people who were present and involved in some capacity will know. In the way that we can talk to Lynn and Jode about their deaths, um, and Cavanella. So all of the characters who have had cores so far will have a memory about this. So the thing that is so frustrating about erase the whole story thing is frequently that the characters and their personalities and everything get erased. Um, in this case, I think what we're going to have is our personalities, our relationships, our memories, everything that we have spent this game developing will still be there. We just get to see how things played out differently for those people. So I'm excited to see this. And you're free to find it frustrating if you're like, I still don't think that that's a good, um, a good, a good uh, plot device and I don't like it in this game either. That's totally valid. I, like I said, I don't always like um, time travel myself, um, but people are allowed to tell time travel stories, and this is a time travel story. Like, that is what it is. Four minutes before death has been part of the game since the beginning. All right, are you ready to move? Shall we do it? I love how the circle that goes around, that, that goes out right before we get the option to rewind time is the same dotted line broken circle that, um, that happens when Missile does his swapping. Man. Oh, this is going to be really exciting. I don't know how we're going to do this or what's going to happen. If I'm going to have access to all three of them, for example. Well, let's find out. Let us rewind time. And you thought I'd beat this game really quickly tonight and have tons of time left over, didn't you? Well, you were wrong. You underestimated me. I fell back through the cracks of time for what seemed like forever. And then I saw it. The final death at the end of this long night. Who exactly am I? I've already seen all of the clues. All I have to do now is remember. Okay, there'll just have been somebody else who was there. The final journey to the truth starts now. Remember <laughs> that Okay, we cleared chapter 17. Well done. Four minutes before death variation. Illustrations. Oh, look at that character design. Oh my God, that's magnificent. I love it. Save your current place in time. Yes, I'm gonna actually save this time. 
Continue playing. Yes. Final chapter. Okay, it tells me. It just lets me know this is the end of the game. When was Yomiel's death? It was 10 years ago when the Tempsic meteorite fell. We traveled back through time and now we're here at the scene of that death. The start of it all is about to replay itself. Four minutes before death. <laughs> what are you doing, honey? Is that on fire? It's ready. What is she doing? Hold it. Give it up. Do you really think you can outrun me? Eek! Now just calm down and drop that weapon. Stay back. If you come any closer, I'll, I'll shoot her. <gasps> Are you kidding? Are you kidding? <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> we have seen the cat before and I had forgotten about the cat. They did do that. Do you know what cats are really good at doing? They knock things around. They knock things off shelves. They smash things around. They just see what happens if they mess with things. <laughs> oh man, okay. So, here's the thing. With Lauren <laughs> versus other raiders. One of my problems, <laughs> or, or at least one of my, <coughs> it's gonna shock you, I know. One of my signature things as a writer and as a person, I'm very serious and I like I, melodrama and tragedy. So if I'm going to tie pieces together, I am naturally going to look for what is the most dramatic most emotional thing you could possibly do. So having my main character be Alma's ghost would be extraordinarily fitting for a Lauren story. That is exactly what I would do. And the way that I talked through it and explained it like makes sense. It's a reasonable thing to do if you're that kind of a writer and that kind of a storyteller if that's the kind of thing that you are drawn to do. If you've seen the adaptation that I've made of Final Fantasy VI and the things that I've done by like getting my hands into a, like getting my hands into a story and trying to like give it impact and make pieces fit together. If you were to look from all of that to my speculation about Alma being the ghost, you would be like, this feels like the same person. This is one person's signature style out of a approach to storytelling. <laughs> Which is part of why I try to draw the distinction when I'm, when I'm talking through things, when I'm like, this is what I would do. I've come to realize, like, I swear, do you mind? I'm just going to talk about stuff. And yes, I did talk about Sissel is the rope that goes around scratching posts <laughs> so that's gonna be intentional um but uh 
When you give critique to other people on their stories, one of the most important things to do that you have to learn to learn both as the recipient of critique and as the person giving critique is that the story belongs to the writer. Do you mind? I know this is a really big, important plot moment, and I really want to dig into it because once I get started on it, I'm probably going to steamroll all the way through. But I really want to talk about a thing. Will you forgive me for talking about a thing? and delaying this really cool thing that is happening. I want to say very clearly, this is not that I'm not invested in the game. I am really invested in this game. <laughs> okay. But this is such an, ex like, this is a really, really well-written game. It's so good. But it's really making me think about writing because good stories make me think about writing. And I will dive back into having the emotional experience of person playing game. But right now, right now, my writer brain is thinking really hard about the things that they're doing. When you give critique for someone else's story, you have to remember that the story is their story. And there is a problem that critiquers have a lot of times. And I've had this both from classmates who are beginning writers and published, experienced, award-winning professors in which they tell you what to do in the story based on what they would do in the story. And sometimes that's a good bouncing off point, but it's not their story. And as the person writing the story, as you get more confidence in your writing, you, you start to get a better sense for how to take their story. Other people, sorry, a webcam got blurry probably because I was waving around. Um, <clears throat> Hold on, we're gonna try this. I think this worked last time. There we go. Um, so, you, when somebody tells you what's wrong with their story, with your story, they're usually frequently correct that something isn't working there, but their solution is almost never the right answer because you have to figure out what the answer is to address their concern that is true to the story that you're telling. And so, like, likewise. <coughs> When I'm trying to figure out what's going to happen in a story, this is a thing that I just kind of realized, that I have realized because of this game. Over the past several games that I've been playing, I started saying more and more, well, this is what I would do. Well, this is what I would do. This game, everything that they've done is really, really carefully, brilliantly constructed. So nothing that they've done, like sometimes a game will do a thing and I'm like, why did you do that? I have no doubt in my mind why they did this. Like everything that they've done is intentional and well calculated, well thought out, well organized, well designed, well written. Um, but they're doing things that they would do. They would never make it be Alma. That's not the kind of storytellers that they are. Having the reveal of who your main character is at the end of all of this make you go, oh my god, are you kidding? That's what they would do. That is not what I would ever, ever do in a million years. I simply don't have the cap capability to do that. That is just not who I am as a writer. And it's so fascinating because if somebody had given me this story years ago, I might have been dissatisfied if it were like a story that was written out and they're like, and then it's like, it's the cat. And I'm like, come on, like you're going to end it on a joke after all that, after all the emotions and the character development, you're not going to dig into emotions and character development. And they're like, well, we're going to, they, they're going to dig into emotions and character development. They're just going to do it their way. <clears throat> and isn't that interesting? I think the way that I, that I, that I thought through it could have been an interesting story if that were the story that was being told. But I don't, it probably wouldn't have worked in these people's hands. It wouldn't, wouldn't be what they would do. I'm really enjoying that. <clears throat> Cause he, we've seen, we've seen the kitten before. We saw the kitten early on and did not think anything of it. But it fits perfectly. <clears throat> We know that the we know that the dog can talk and has a personality <clears throat> and that the dog's actions are like like dogs can run and jump really far. 
The kitten was alive at the junkyard scene. Was there a kitten at the junkyard scene? Okay, I don't remember. Oh, the kitten died during the junkyard scene. Well, I don't know. Cats have nine lives. <laughs> That's right, Blues. You thought it was Alma, but it was me, Cat. No. If I tried to write this story with this kind of a twist, it would be deeply unsatisfying. But it's going to be very satisfying because they did it. The kitten knocked Sissel's body over. Oh, interesting. Or should we say Sissel knocked Yomiel's body over? All right. We'll get to it. We'll get to this. We'll do stuff. All right. So that's what I wanted to say about storytelling and writing and my style and other people's styles and things like that. I hope that... I hope there was something that you could, I, I hope that there was something out of all of that that I just said that is of interest and useful to you. For those of you who are writers, I hope that that helps give you conviction to follow your own sense of storytelling and be true to yourself. Because even if what you do and what other people do are not the same, and even if other people disagree with what you're doing, you may need to change what you do, but you don't necessarily need to change what you do to what they say you should do. So. <clears throat> I have, I, I really care a lot about writing, okay? I really, 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 really care a lot about writing. It's one of the most important things to me. I'm really excited that I'm writing again. It'd be really cool to have a story come out in an anthology. Cross your fingers for me, folks. I have until the end of this month to make the revisions. Also, they pointed out that the draft I sent them had in brackets, like, my notes to myself to fix a scene up. I hadn't touched the draft since a few years ago, so I didn't realize that the draft I sent them had that. Oops. Anyway, they were very understanding. I clearly I sent the wrong draft. It's fine. It's fine. All right, back to the game. To Jode. Huh? Oh, a kitten. Shoo! You might get hurt. That and lands in him, he dies. Are you okay? You're all right now. Are you hurt? God, he's such a nice man. Just like, look at his nice face. Save me, mister! I was just doing my job. The gods, they're the ones who saved you. What's your job, mister? Me? I'm a police detective. So that's the Temsic meteorite, eh? It's beautiful looking at it from this angle. It changed all of our fates completely. That's Kismet Park. We can't stop Temsic from falling from the sky, but we might be able to protect you from that fragment and save your life. I don't know. What's the matter, Detective Jode? To be perfectly honest, I'm scared. If that meteorite fragment doesn't get him, I'm pretty sure I would have shot him. Dot, dot, dot. We might not be able to change your fate of dying. Dot, dot, dot. I can accept that. Wow! That is a really powerful character moment right there. I'm sorry, but that is really powerful. And it fits him and it makes sense. He understands the gravity of what he's saying and he has had an experience that was worse than that. You know? Jode is impressed. What I did is inexcusable. No matter how the future might change, that fact will never go away. He can't forgive himself for the fact that he tried to destroy everyone's lives and resulted in a little girl causing the death of her mother, which is pretty bad. If my fate is to die here, then I accept that. 
This will be our last battle against fate. Oh, I'm glad they're just telling me it's the final battle. Beyond that will be a new future. Okay, let's get started. All right. Now, how are we going to save you? If Lynn would just wander off somewhere, that would solve everything. When her sweet potato is almost ready, ha, she's not going to budge from that spot. It's a sweet potato. Okay, that's what that is. I couldn't figure that out. But you know, it makes me wonder. A little girl all alone in the park, listening to music and roasting a sweet potato? What kind of childhood did this girl have? Doesn't everybody have at least one day in their life like that? Give her a break! Anyway, if Lynn won't budge from that spot, then we'll just have to have the fragment move instead. I know time is passing. <sighs> Hi, doggy. Basket nozzle. Roasted sweet potato. Headphones. What do we got? Nozzle. Nozzle. Oh! If only I could reach those, they might spray oppositely. Basket. Can't go up there. Can't go up there. And I'm gonna swap those light fixtures with the, uh, what's it name? Okay, so he can't, he cannot move anywhere. Mino, the Rock of the Gods, yes. It's possible I can't do anything yet. Ah. She's got her headphones on, which is why she doesn't notice this. do something with the sweet potato. It's so close, I can't do it. Oh, but I can do this. I can examine the sweet potato. I can turn up the headphones. Hold on. What are you doing? You're going to hurt poor Miss Lynn's ears. I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking. You really startled her. You even made her drop her sweet potato. I know how much this girl loves her food, too. <laughs> anyway, at least her fate has changed, albeit ever so slightly. Yay! What in the world is this thing? Oh boy, you even forgot what a sweet potato is? It's a roasted root vegetable. It's good. There's nothing like them on a cold winter's day. They're sweet and they smell delicious. These guys sure are making me want to try one. Curiosity, huh? And rock the basket. I can spray the nozzle. That sweet potato! That big scary sweet potato! That's not a sweet potato, Missile, that's Mino. 
Oh, right, of course. But look at them, the potato and Mino. Right now they both have the same shape. So you're saying you could swap them, huh? Good idea, Missile. Okay, here I go, and I'm going to need your help. My help. How do I get over there? Oh, I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to have ridden that with Sissel. Missile and Sissel, they rhyme their pets. Supposed to have ridden that so I could then have that spray up there. Yeah, I think that's what I was supposed to do. It's about time for that meteorite to come down. Uh oh, we have to change the fragment's path somehow. Oh, it looks like both paths and fates can be difficult things to change. There has to be a way. If we worked together, you and me, I thought we'd be able to do something. Thought. That's funny. I wonder why he's using the past tense. Well, because... I need to do this again. I don't know what that's going to do, but we're going to do it. We're going to go with it. I don't know that's what I was supposed to do. That's what I did. Let's see what happens when that goes wrong. Shall we? What just happened? Oh, it still killed them. Okay. Alas. I doubt we can move those two from that spot. Which means we have to do something with the Temsic fragment instead. That should be easy with our powers! I think you're right, Missile. This is gonna be the grand finale. Guess I'd better rewind the clock again and see if I can pick up any other clues. Okay. So, there's going to be something that... Hold on. Wrong one. Okay. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> that worked much better. We'll see if this actually is the right idea or not. Maybe I actually want to swap it the other way, but we'll see. Okay. Oh, look. The lamppost is bending. But it hasn't broken yet. It really is a wonder it hasn't snapped. It just might hold out for a little while longer. If I recall, the Tempsic fragment smashed through the glass lantern on its way down. But if Mino sits firmly in its way, then fate should change. Not sure what else I can do. So they have to say, oh, poor Miss Lynn. I'm sorry. If you're so sorry, then put her down. All right now, Missile. I was really out of my head that day. Well, we can talk about all of this later. The Tempsic meteorite is going to fall very soon. Before that happens, I have to think of a way to do something about that fragment. And I'll do everything I can to help, too. Okay, well, let's find out if Mino is enough to save the day. It's about time for that meteorite to come down. Don't worry, Missile. I think we're ready for it. Look what's right in the fragment's path. Oh, okay, that giant sweet potato. If anything can get in the way, that ugly monster can. Ouch. Anyway, now the fragment's path ought to change. Let's see what happens. Here it comes. There, how's that? Look, the fragment's course, it changed a little. Now Yomiel's fate should really change. Wait a minute, take another look at the fragment's trajectory. Now that it's changed, what's in its path? In its path? No! Ugh! Detective Jode! The Tumsic fragment shot through his leg! What? But the cruel twists of fate weren't over yet. He's gonna shoot the guy too. Mm, or is he gonna shoot Lynn? Come on, put it down! Huh? Jode, put the gun down! Now! You don't! You're going to shoot him! I don't know if it's his detective training or what, but even though he's shaking from the pain, the gun doesn't waver. Hi, Countess Lita. As you can see, we are at the very end of this game. It's very exciting. Oh my goodness. This game is really good, and I can see why everyone loves it. Yes, if you have not played this game yourself, I strongly encourage you to go do so instead of watching me. This is definitely spoilers. We are at the very, very, very end of the game. But thank you for coming. I'm Lauren the Flute. I'm about to beat this game. We're playing Chicory next Tuesday. We're continuing to play Undertale Yellow on Thursdays. If that sounds like fun, feel free to, to follow me. Um, or you can watch it on YouTube if you want to watch me play all the way through it. But for now, we're going to beat this game. I know I've heard such good things about Chicory, but I'm really enjoying this game, so it had better be a good game to follow this one up, <laughs> you know? All right. Anyone who has not played this game and does not want spoilers, I assume you have left. I'm going to count down and then we're going to keep going. Three, two, one. Okay, I'm going to continue going with this and see how horribly I messed this up. I really hope Joe doesn't accidentally shoot Lynn here. Put the gun down! No! I knew it. This is my true fate. In the end, I stole his life away with my own hands. No, it's not even him. You killed Lynn. We're going to have to redo this completely. I won't let that happen! Missile, 
The bullet has stopped in midair. I'm gonna change her with a sweet potato. <laughs> I'm gonna change. I wonder why the sweet potato was shaped like that. Oh my god. And and they set this up because we have to do this earlier. Oh my goodness. I'm here inside the bullet. Now let's swap it with something. What? With what? I'm gonna throw a sweet potato at this man's face. Detective Jode, the meteorite fragment is what made you pull the trigger. He is, I love Cecil, he's so good. He has such a good heart. He's like, please do not blame yourself or hate yourself. No, but see, Chrono, it's a cooked sweet potato, which makes it soft. So it's at least softer than a, an uncooked sweet potato. All right, we won't let you become a murderer. We have to prove that murder isn't the detective's true fate. And to do that, we have to stop this bullet. There must be something with the same shape as the bullet around here. I wondered what I was gonna do with that really weird looking roasted sweet potato. Are you ready to swap the potato and see what happens? Eat your potato. Oh. Oh. Oh no. No, that's that's not good. Oh no. We stopped the bullet, but we still couldn't save him. That's not true. My fate of getting pierced through the back might not have changed, but I'm still alive. What? I'm not dead, I'm just unconscious. Okay, so your fate of death has changed, but still. This fate is just too painful to watch in every sense. You can tell though, this guy has experienced something worse than physical pain because he's like, this is acceptable. I don't think so. As long as I'm alive, that's good enough for me. But we were overlooking one thing. The wheel of fate was still slowly turning. <gasps> no! No! Look out! Wake up! You gotta get out of there! Damn it, my leg won't work! It's all over! We've run out of time! Miss Lynn! It's not over yet. But there isn't anything else to swap with! Why don't we just let it play out and then try to find another way next time? Even if she dies, all you have to do is possess her corpse. And then you can redo her last four minutes as many times as it takes. No, I won't do that. Why not? Sure, the fact of her death would be erased, but her memory of it would remain like a scar on her psyche. I won't let that happen. Not if I can help it. But what can we do now? Even if we work together? Are you going to control her and move her out of the way with your powers of the dead? I think there might be something that can be done. What is it? Hello. Am I back? <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so I'm gonna have to patch this video up anyway. Um, so for anyone watching this on YouTube tomorrow or at a later date, <laughs> the ghost of the machine is sabotaging my ability to beat this game tonight. So we just disconnected and reconnected, but we're back. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> so as I was saying, and I don't know what the last thing you guys heard, I was like, oh, it's going to be him. It's going to be, um, Yomiel. Uh, and the fact that Missal says, what can Sissel and I do? Indicates that it's not going to be either Sissel or Missal. It's going to be Yomiel. So we're all good. Don't forget, I'm here too. With three kinds of powers among us, we ought to be able to fight this battle. This battle against the fate of death.
good music. I'm sorry, it's just really good. Yo meal. Sissel, your power is manipulating objects. Use your power to manipulate this. Huh? I don't get it. Just trust me, let's go. All right, I'll try to move there. Now gather your strength and make it spray as if your life depended on it. Uh, I'm dead though. In that case, make it spray as if your death depended on it. Give it your all. And remember, you'll only have a split second. Okay, now do it. Got it. <gasps> now it's your turn, missile. What? A me? But what can I do? I think you know the answer to that. Okay, got it. He's going to flatten himself with it. You can swap them. That hunk of concrete will go back to its original position. But... Even if I swap them, it'll still be right above Miss Lynn. Don't worry. Okay, I'll do it. I'll swap them. Yeah, he's going to possess Lynn to move her out of the way. He's going to get crushed. can we do now? I don't see how gaining a second or two helped. Oh, it helped, all right. Those few seconds were exactly what I wanted. Last up, it's my turn. Your turn. Him. You know what my power is, right? I can manipulate living creatures. Wait a minute. You mean... That's right. I'm going to save that little girl. Save her by manipulating my own unconscious body. He gods. Yeah. I would have liked to have saved him. In the same way that I wanted to save Jode. If we can undo the evil that you've done and we give you another chance to not be that person. Jode considered himself a murderer because he thought about murdering. This man, in a very, very bad place, committed a crime. But if we can undo the crime... And we can undo the very bad place. He could be okay. No, I'm pretty sure he's dead. Unfortunately. I don't know if we're going to get a take backsy. Ah, you're awake. Is your knee okay? Huh? Oh, it'll be fine. It's just a scrape. I'm lucky it wasn't a fatal hit. But the main thing is that you're not hurt. Y you saved me, mister? I was just doing my job. The gods, they're the ones who saved you. What's your job, mister? Me? I'm a police detective. Do you think you could go call the police for me? I think you could do it quicker than I could. But... What's that? This is a detective's badge. We give them to children who've been very brave. A detective's badge? Thanks! Okay, you know what to do, little detective.
Are you alive? Yeah, sadly. Hang on, help is coming. What made you do such a reckless thing? To be perfectly honest, I don't really know. There's something really extra painful. He he paid he paid this price with his own life, but at the same time it wasn't just his life. The the version of him that paid the price didn't understand the cost that was being paid or the decision to pay it. And this is a version of him who hasn't killed anyone, and this is a version of him who hasn't done any harm to anyone. But his, his future self made a choice. That, that twists a knife in, I don't know. It really does. The, the, thing, with, the thing with time travel stories not working, I think, is a lot of times they make it so that it's like it might as well have never happened. But in this case, the, the pain and the effectiveness of the story is actually magnified by the erasure of the future that we know. I'm sorry, it's, this is one of the hard things about reading out loud now is that when I'm um, emotionally invested in a moment, I, uh, <laughs> it's a little harder to do dialogue. I hope that's all right. Yeah, I didn't think this game would make me cry. No, that's, that's true. I did say that more than once, didn't I? Well, <laughs> I guess I shouldn't have underestimated either this game or my tendency to be waterworks. Yeah. When I came to, my body was already moving all by itself. It was, if, it was as if somebody else was controlling me. I see. But you know, I'm glad it happened. to think of it. I just saw it a few minutes ago. It's probably a stray. It's kind of limp. Is it okay? I don't know. I think it's unconscious. That's funny. It doesn't look like it's injured or anything. Poor little kitty. How about if I take it to my house and look after it? Would you like to come home with me, little kitten? Does he get to live? Well, it looks like his fate just changed in a big way. <laughs> Whose fate? That kitten's, of course. Sissel. <laughs> well, see, this way, 
he can still be part of their family and all of the relationships that he's developed as a ghost can become relationships that he develops as a cat. So they don't undo an entire game's worth of character development. Yeah, good job, Chrono. Gold star to you. All right. The name Sissel echoes in my head. That's my real name. He's long, lonely, ten years. You were my one and only friend. He turns and looks at me. And for once it doesn't make me uncomfortable. You know? What a... One of the things that this game is so good at is recontextualizing things. Do you remember the first time he turns and looks at you? And he doesn't know you're his cat friend when he knows that somebody's interfering with things. How about it? Do you remember now? <laughs> Old friend. So cute! Oh my god, he's so cute. Oh my god, he's so cute. Oh my god. I think I finally remember. Ten years ago, I was a little kitten that wandered into this park. I was weak and all alone in the world. Somebody please look at me. Huh? Oh, a kitten. Shoo, you might get hurt. Somebody, please reach a hand out to me. That's Yomiel. That's Yomiel speaking. Feeling trapped, feeling alone, wondering what's going on, and the cat finds him, the cat sees him, because cats have heightened sense. I had only just died at the time. I had lost everything. My life. My memory. My body wouldn't move anymore, but I still managed to reach out a hand to him. The next thing I knew, my soul had transferred to the black kitten. With no recollection of who I was, I lived as a cat with you for a while. After a while, the man regained his memory. I went back to being just a cat. And then the man got his body back. That's why the cat knocks over his body. in the junkyard. I took my body back from the morgue. There was somebody I just had to go see. Just one more time. I took control of my body and hurried to her house. But I was just a little too late. 
had just missed her. As she left this world. She left me a note that said, I'm coming to you, Yomiel. The man named me Sissel. It was the name of something important he had lost along with his life. His fiance. He told me about it once, but I didn't understand what it was. Those ten years were very happy for me, but they weren't very happy for the man, and there was nothing I could do for him. For ten years, I wandered through the darkness with no particular place to go. As time passed, my powers gradually changed. At first, I could only manipulate small creatures and objects. But then after a while, I could manipulate people. That's when the darkness inside me deepened and I started to get a little twisted. I wanted light. Distorted artificial light. What was in the basket? I got my revenge on Lynn, I would see that light. Or at least that's what I tried to believe. <laughs> oh, that's where he's leaning against. And... He, uh, somebody pointed out later he was leaning against barbed wire like he couldn't feel it. That's the barbed wire or something that he's leaning against. I left my old self buried in that junkyard and walked away. The black cat. I was possessing Sissel then. It wouldn't look very much like a murder if the corpse got up and walked away, after all. So you borrowed the body of your old friend. Cecil was inside that bag I was carrying tonight. I had no intention of leaving my friend behind in this country when I left. But then, when I went to possess his body, I realized something horrible. What was that? Cecil there inside the bag was dead. What? Did you not put holes in it? Did she shoot him by accident? I wasn't able to control her completely. The first billet didn't hit anything. Or so I thought. But it did hit something, didn't it? It hit Sissel inside that bag. Yes, that's when I lost my life. Right there in the presence of Temsic radiation. And that's when I got my powers of the dead. My ghost tricks. And who's Ray? I think I understand it now. Why I was the only one who couldn't get his memory back. It was because I thought that corpse was me. It was the only corpse I could see at the time, after all. But as it turns out, it wasn't the only dead body. My true death was hiding just behind that corpse. Now that I think about it, do you remember what you said? That you knew all along about 
me saving Lynn tonight. If you knew, why didn't you try to stop me? It's simple. Because I couldn't, even if I wanted to. Huh? Why not? Remember the thing about individual differences and the powers we get? I can control all kinds of things, from the living to the dead. But even so, there are some things that you can do that I can't. You mean, I can't even rewind time, let alone change the fate of a death. If I could do those things, I would have saved your life. The music is doing a lot of heavy lifting here, too. <laughs> Not only that, but I never would have just let my fiancé stay dead like that. But, but you're here ten years in the past now. That's thanks to your powers. I just tagged along with you. In any case, now the starting point of this entire tragedy has changed dramatically, altering fate. The fate of your death, the kitten Sissel's fate. And I can just bet you the fate of the woman you loved has changed too. That's why he went after Alma. It says something if she left a note. That tells us something. The game doesn't come out and say it, but... Yes. I believe you're right. So, this was the last fate to be averted, eh? <laughs> Yomiel was aware that he took a young girl hostage with a gun. And because he is the person that we come to know later on in the game, he would be horrified at himself and his intent and his actions there. So, Yomiel, it looks like your plan for revenge ended in failure. Yes, and I'm glad too. I think I kind of understand now what you've been feeling these ten years. She understood. She set she shed tears for me. That's when my revenge was over. She saved me from the darkness. Well, I guess it's time we got back. A new ten years later was just born. Right, we should get back to our new present. I can't wait to see Miss Lynn and Miss Camilla again! Missile here to provide a little levity. So these past ten years will now all vanish. Well, not completely. The memories of all of us here will remain. Including the memory of what I did, my crime. That's the way this game of the dead works, eh? And no matter what the reason, there's no denying the fact that I took Lynn hostage and tried to point a gun at her. I have no intention of running away from that either. The most inexcusable crime in my new life. Well. Hey, Sissel. Yeah? When we go back, our fates will no longer be interconnected. It will be like we never met. So before that happens, I just wanted to say one thing. Tonight, I stole away your life with my own hands. Yeah, because he was controlling Lynn at that moment. I'm truly sorry. That's already a thing of the long past. Our fates have changed now, right, Yomiel? Thank you, Sissel. I'm so very glad I met you. Me too, Yomiel. Sissel? Are we ever going to see each other again? I couldn't stand it if we weren't. Don't worry, Missile. I bet we'll see each other again someday. Ten years from now, our paths are sure to cross. We'll just have to wait until then. 
Cecil, I'll, I'll never forget you. I'll never forget you either, valiant little doggy. Well, it looks like you come to live with me now. So let's be getting home, little black cat. Home, huh? That sounds good, Detective Jode. We all witnessed the birth of a new beginning. And now, we're each going back to our own new present. We said goodbye to the parts of our stories that would be lost, believing that someday our paths would all cross again. Wait, does Yomi live? Jode in the past said he might. Wait. Before you go back to a new present, I wanted to thank you. Before I cease to exist. Oh, it's you. Yes, it is I, Ray. in case you have forgotten again. Thanks to you, everything has turned out as I had hoped. I am really grateful to you, Sissel. Thank you. Ooh. But don't forget, I was only on a journey to find my own lost memory. Yes, yes, I know that. I know all about you. Can I ask you a question, Ray? I want to know. Who exactly are you? Noir Detective Black Cat, yeah. Fair enough. I will tell you. Let me tell you about another version of tonight's events. of anyone else who died tonight. I can't believe this isn't just our epilogue. You changed the fates of many people tonight. The first of which was hers. You had not been there for her tonight. Her fate would have been to die in that lonely spot on the outskirts of town. If that had occurred, what do you suppose would have happened? Let me tell you a story. The story of a little creature. Is this the mouse? After they stole her life that night, they broke into her apartment. They stole the wooden box from the ceiling hiding place and left. And in the process... Two little dead bodies were left behind. However, the little fellow's spirit lived on. He desperately reached out his paw toward his mistress. And that's when a miracle occurred. What? Look at that! The powers of the dead! But how? He didn't really understand it himself. Not yet, anyway. But with all you know now, I bet you understand it, do you not? Hey, wait a minute. There was a bit of Temsic. Yeah. That's right. He died inside the aura of that strange energy. But unfortunately, with his meager powers, he was unable to save his little mistress. There just wasn't anything he could do with only the power to swap objects. He needed the power to manipulate objects in order to save the little lady. The little fellow chased after the men, but there still wasn't anything he could do. In the end, he was left behind with the man in red in the deep, deep sea. And then... He went back. 
he went back to the world of ten years before, to the moment of the man in Red's death. What? What? He decided to wait it out. He decided to wait until that night came again. And that's the other version of the story of this night. A story that has taken these ten years to be retold. What? Wait! Wait! Is Ray grown up missile? So that was you, huh? That's right. <laughs> okay, that's just that's just really kind of silly, but um amazing. I've done exactly the wrong voice. <laughs> I missile. Ten years is a very long time in dog years. You couldn't change the fates of these people on your own. So you decided to wait those ten years out. Exactly. And then at last, that fateful night rolled around again. By this time, I had grown old and my powers were weak. So I decided I needed to find somebody to help me this time around. ghost tricks because a dog came up with the name and dogs do tricks. Yeah. Somebody who possessed different powers than me. But wait a second. You were able to manipulate that desk lamp. Over the course of the long years, my powers changed. My ability to swap objects weakened. But I became able to manipulate small objects. But in that case, why didn't you cooperate with yourself? Because I couldn't. Huh? From watching the man in red, I found out there were individual differences in our powers. I couldn't do any of the things he could do. Like travel through the telephone lines, for example. What? It may not seem like much, but it's a very important power. Especially if you're trying to chase somebody. But there's something I don't understand. You knew from the very beginning that I had that power. How did you know so much about me? Why wouldn't I? After all, we had met before on that night the first time around. We what? We met before? From listening to the conversation of the two intruders to the apartment, I learned that Miss Lynn had lost her life at that junkyard on the edge of town. I followed the ghost world paths to the junkyard and came upon an incredible scene. Imagine, if you will, there in the darkness, a twisting and swiveling desk lamp. It made my fur stand on end, I can tell you. That, that was me? So I was shot on that night the first time around as well. So in a previous incarnation, Sissel animated the lamp and gave information to Missile. And then later, Missile animated the lamp so that Sissel could get information. You had lost your memory that time too. You had just died and you felt confused. You declined to cooperate with me. I did what? I just want to find my own lost memory. I'm sorry, but I can't help you. That's what you said. And then you disappeared. Away over the telephone line. I'm really sorry I didn't help you. That's why I decided that this time, 
I would use that desire of yours to our mutual advantage. Mutual advantage? The only thing you were interested in was finding your own lost memory. If I could guide you along the right path to doing that, we would both benefit. And namely, the right path would be the path to the man in red, to Yomiel. What? I gave you the information you needed to know to set you in the right direction. And then I gave you a time limit. And a time limit? That's right. As you know, I said you only had until tomorrow morning. If I hadn't done that, you wouldn't have found out the truth tonight. And the man in red would have been sealed away at the bottom of the sea forever. If that had happened, it would have all been over. Then you mean that that thing about ceasing to exist? Oh, that completely made up. A little naughty of me, I know. But I just wanted you to use your time wisely. Oh, boy. I hate to admit it, but this little doggy really outsmarted me in every way. <laughs> Let's just call it the wisdom that comes with age. <laughs> huh. And now it's time to say farewell. These past ten years will cease to exist, and with them, so will I. Missile. I believed in you. I always knew you could do it. And so you did. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Missile. So you waited and waited these ten long years. All for the sake of your two ladies, Lynn and Camilla, eh? Of course. Because that's what doggies do. Now then, farewell, Sissel. And so the story of a single night came to an end. Nobody but us knew what had really happened in this town tonight. I made my way back back to a new present. You ready for the epilogue, folks? Huh? How come it's dark? I'll just turn on the lights here. This music is creepy. I'm tense. Aren't you tense? Aren't you tense? Are you tense? I'm tense. Haha! <laughs> Were you surprised? You bet I was! You nearly scared me to death! Okay. That was mean! That was mean of them! Oh, that was mean of them. Oh, mean! <laughs> Yippee! It worked! Oh my gosh. But it's not even my birthday today. It was my mom's birthday the day before yesterday. I made this surprise for her, but it came out so well I wanted to use it again. That's all right, Lynn. After all, we're celebrating the birth of your new position as detective, right? Really? Thank you, Detective Jode. Dad, you're home. Hi, Camila. Let me introduce you. This is Lynn. She was just assigned to the detective division today. Hi, Camila. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Lynn. Congratulations on becoming a detective! Huh? Is something wrong? You have one of those badges, too! Oh, this? Yeah! I have one just like it! My dad just gave it to me the other day! But yours looks a lot older than mine, though! <laughs> How long are you going to keep wearing that toy badge, Lynn? What's wrong with it? To me, this is the symbol of a real detective! been 10 years since then, hasn't it? Who would have guessed you'd actually become a detective one day? When you gave me this badge, I just knew. I knew it was my destiny somehow. Destiny, eh? And now that I'm a detective, I'll find out where that destiny will lead me. <laughs> that you will. That you will. Oh, 
Oh, hello. Don't tell me you're that same little kitten. That's right, the very one. You know what? This is a very, very special cat. He's 10 years old, but he's still a kitten. <laughs> still a kitten? Yep, he never got any bigger or anything. Wow, what a mysterious little fellow. I know, right? His name is Sissel. Sissel. Huh. It seems to me I've heard that name somewhere before. I think Sissel likes you, Lynn. All right, everyone. Let's start the celebration. Okay, Mom. She's got her mom's hair. Does she know? I bet you're just like me. Your destiny led you here somehow, too. <laughs> and so we meet again, Sissel. For ju from just that single night as a human, I got a glimpse into their world. And I learned something. Their fates, their lives, they were all interconnected. Somewhere, somehow, in some way. And now this is my new fate. <sighs> I guess I really am a cat. It suits me just fine to curl up and watch. Watch the strange and beautiful patterns of their living as they unfold. But it looks like I'll have plenty to watch here for quite a while. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Happy birthday to our lovely Lynn! Uh, like I said, it isn't my birthday. Oh, Missile! Hey, Missile, I thought I asked you to stay home and guard the fort. But birthdays are for celebrating together with friends and loved ones. Nothing like it, baby! Watch him eat his spaghetti the way he rolls it and unrolls it. Oh my god, and like my mom is just sitting there like, these are some crazy people in my life. Like that not bad huh but definitely not good maybe now I can be a great detective just like inspector Cavanella what kind of example is the inspector providing for his men the artists did a really good job <laughs> here's your food gentlemen Memory, what are you doing here? I heard you were going to be picking new members for the special investigation unit today. So you took on a part-time job here again just so you could eavesdrop? Oh, you have no idea the lengths I'd go to reach my goals. All right, Chrono, that is what I wanted to hear. That is, that is exactly, that's the right choice. <laughs> I've never cooked this way before. So exotic, so exciting. Turmeric, coriander, cumin, and fenugreek. Curried chicken paradise. La la la. Is this really necessary? This new curried chicken menu item? Oh, but our very best customer requested it. Now, good luck with the tasting. Who is our very best customer? Oh boy, I don't think I could eat another bite. Just who exactly is this very best customer anyway? <laughs> well, I'm glad that man gets to live a normal life.
Oh, yeah. Are you sure we really need all these explosives? Not to worry, beauty, my dear. I followed the instructions exactly. 20 kilograms of gunpowder, just like it said. They're trying to break in and steal national secrets. Wait a minute. 20 kilograms? I thought it was 20 grams. Oh my god. Why is there a... Why, wait. Chicken Kitchen has money in a vault that... Oh, okay. All right. Well. Man. I'm sorry. Oh, look at that! This is where you work, huh, Papa? That's right, sweetheart. Darling husband, don't you have any ideas at all you could give me? You must have heard some juicy stories. The indiscretions of a minister, perhaps? Now, now, must you talk that way in front of our darling angel? Here's to the stodgy mind of my darling husband. Yeah, his smile is adorable. I love this music. Yet whatever did happen with you, this deal is going quite well. Oh, I must say, these grapes are quite good, my man. The Yonoi is about to scrape the bottom of the sea, sir. Be forewarned, sir. He can Keep it together, man. Are you trying to give me a case of the vapors? I believe I nearly died of fright just now. This person is awesome. The sound effects were really effective too. Oh my god. Love, peace, and pigeons! Long live rock and roll! I did see you guys mention the Sissel Saves Nine Lives thing. That is very cute and clever of them. You can hear the guitar still. Clashing with the music. Oh my god, that guy's pigeon went to join with those pigeons. Stop the park from charging admission. Protect the rights of those who live here. Oh my god, amazing. These characters are really silly. Yes, I did notice that Sissel is not alive or dead. But sitting and watching people, like, he's at least noticed by others. I thought when, when they said that he was unconscious, I was like, oh, is he actually dead? So. Today's the day you know. He's finally getting out. You know, everybody's starting to get real tired of seeing you do that. Then let me show you a new dance that's been passed down in our family for generations. We do this when we have a stomach ache. We call it Dance Away the Pain. Oh, I'm real interested in that one. Think you could show it to me, say, next week? You got it! Oh my god. Smartphone promotion. Okay. Oh, his legs are working! Ten long years, Yomiel! Your time's up today. The young lady who always comes to visit you is waiting outside. Do we get to meet Sissel's namesake? Thank you, Sissel. Oh, he pays at the cat! Oh my god. Oh 
Oh my god, look at Sissel on the couch. He's so cute. I just want to, like, annoy him. <laughs> oh. That's really cute. Yeah, well, look, okay, I am a cat mom, which means that I want to bother the cat. I'm sorry, I'm checking to see where my cat is. Where are you, Sophie? She's not in her house. Oh, there she is. Come on, baby. Yeah, no, it, it, it did seem that Lynn remembered at, at, at the, like, the very end of her scene. Like, I think on some level, like, they, they, they have, the thing is, it's been 10 years. And she was so young, and she's had such a full life since then, as opposed to like an adult having a memory, like having an experience and having life. Um, I feel like, oh my God, oh my God, there's a donut, a donut for Missile. I don't know if he's gonna notice. So my, at least, so that's my, my thought is that, oh my God, oh my God, there's the rat and the Missile. Oh, good. Look at that. The rat gets a donut. Even the rat gets a happy end. Excellent. Yeah, so the fact that I climb on and over and around things and knock things over, <laughs> get into trouble, interacting with things, one might say. Yeah, no, this game is really well done. There's like a couple of moments that I think might be design issues. Um, but the whole thing with Ray is like, I, I will be quite honest, Missile waiting 10 years and being Ray and all that, that doesn't work for me, but it's so at the very end of things that I can just kind of set that aside and enjoy everything else about the entire end section and end sequence. Oh, look at that! I get the cat background! The cat ground! Reincarnation. You know, I do love dogs, but it doesn't work for me from a narrative perspective. Um... Like, that's what it feels like to me, Violet Square, is that it feels like they needed to have someone give information and serve as a tutorial. And then they were like, um, what can we do with this? I guess we'll just repeat sort of exactly what we did with these other characters and do it in this weird kind of backward sideways thing. Oh my god, challenges. I cleared a bunch of chapters. Look at all those chapters I cleared. Cleared ghost trick. Oh good. Curious soul. Curious. You're curious because you're a cat. A cat. You're a cat. Jumping poltergeist. I did the swapping of things. Yes. Lead the way outside without falling? I don't think I did that. Oh, is that the stealth mission? I definitely did not do that. There was definitely falling involved. All right. Avert fate without any deaths after the final fate change. Oh, amazing, okay. Too much medicine. Oh, I did. I did get that one. Can't even nail it on the second try. Man, failed by keeping the ball away from me now. Oh my god, amazing! I did not get like any of these. Failed by removing a large symbol. I did not clear the challenges. <gasps> the 
They have the arranged version of the soundtrack. What's the... <gasps> This is the non-arranged. Oh, this is the original graphics! Oh, snap! Oh, snap! Sophie's meowing. She's got things to say. Hold on. Nope. Oh, it's rolling away. She's like, this is taking you so long. Oh my god, I can't wait. Oh wait, hold on. different Wow, that's different. Hold on. Oh man. I'm trying to remember the other tracks that I loved so much. They added a lot more bass. Everything has a lot more bass. Hold on. Wow, wow. Do you hear how crunched that is? Amazing. I already listened to Trauma. That's the first one that I went to listen to. Oh, this one was really good, I think. Yeah, it's really interesting how different things look. Wow. Okay. Was this the one that you folks were saying you liked this version better? This sounds really good though. I can see this actually. Yeah, that one might be one actually. Yeah, I can see that. Let's see, let's listen to this. Okay, hold on. Interesting. Oh, I'm dying to know what does Cabanella sound like? Hold on. Okay. The vibes are really similar. All right. I think that's pretty much what I wanted to listen to here. I will listen to more, probably not on stream. But man. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that in case you didn't get all the information. Oh, oh. Oh, I, I missed some of these. Wow. Amazing. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. Fantastic. Oh man. Incredible. He died 10 years ago in the park. He's now trying to gain a new life himself. I'm so glad that Yomiel gets a second chance. He's not a bad person. You know? Wrong button. Some of them changed the scene. Hold on. I think that probably only happens during the story as opposed to look at that there's a question mark there for his body yeah oops wrong button unless it's maybe Jode's changed where's Jode did I pass him probably did no he didn't oh man where is he come on buddy where? There you are, hero. Yeah, so his doesn't... Oh, there we go. 
Okay. All right, well, this game is super cool. I'm super satisfied with it. I don't think I'm gonna do the ghost puzzles, but thank you so much. This is really fun. And I'm super, okay, I guess I'll have to figure out how to patch this together. Um, but uh, but this has been really fun. Oh, look at the illustrations. Are they not gonna just be like pictures from the game? Oops, wrong button. Yeah, because they showed these to me at the end. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on, wait a minute. Look at that. We have Alma and Camila. Character designs for Yomiel. Oh my god, are these different designs for Lynn? She looks way too old in all of these. Although I really like the one on the right. That's really cute. Wait. Was this one? They must have had a character change with her. Because here she looks like she's a full-grown adult woman. And here they start making her look younger. The one in the middle looks too much like an Ace Attorney character. Doesn't she? Wait, oh, that is, is that Joe's coat? I think you're right. Okay. Oh my god. They had some ideas with this guy. It is okay, it is Emma Sky. Okay, thank you. Alright, the one in the middle here looks too much like this guy's not alive. Oh, sad little girl. Oh, she's really cute. All of these are cute. Oh my god, was Missile at one point a bulldog? Or did they entertain making Sissel a dog? He's a really cute cat. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad they decided to make her look like a rose. I think that was a much better idea. Like, and, uh, was this supposed to be her daughter? Or they changed the concept. Oh my god, the minister. So on the left, he looks very much like a like exhausted Japanese salary man. And then they made him look, he still looks fairly Japanese there. And then they, oh, here's a bunch of the goons. Oh my god. So that's just gumshoe on the left. Oh my god, Cavanella. Wait, was this the character that ever? No, no, because those are those are the other, like those are the other people. And then Cavanella it looks like they had a pretty clear idea of what they wanted Cavanella to look like. Is this this is the leaflet guy? I'm so glad that instead of making him look like a crazy old man, oh my god! And this was the, uh, was this the uh, the superintendent? No, I don't think that's Jode on the left. I feel like that's, um, maybe that's Jode on the left. I thought that was just one of the random goons. Because the guy in the middle, though, he's the young guy. Alright, so that's the pigeon guy. Alright. Oh my god, the chef. It is funny to look at these rejected designs. I'm glad they went with what they did. Alright, so this is Jode painting with silly little hat oh here's animation notes they did such a good job with the animation oh man I don't remember him bowing oh my god that's awesome all these moments that they had to script out. Oh my god, I remember all these parts. Oh man, storyboarding stuff. Oh, some of, some of these things I don't get until I, uh... This is, oh, sorry, that one was such a good design. Yes, I know, Chrono, I, there's a person out there who writes fan fiction that's Ghost Trick slash, Ghost tri Trick crossed with Final Fantasy VI, and I need it in my life. I will probably go look that up and see if it actually is up my alley or not. 
because I like reading fanfic and I've actually seen that pop up during the Final Fantasy, like while looking through Final Fantasy VI fanfic because that's a thing I write. <laughs> Thanks, Gerno. Oh man. I will be writing more fanfic over the years. Just continue. Yeah. So that was fun. Thanks for like going way over. I'll patch this together and try to get this up on YouTube tomorrow. We will be continuing to play Undertale Yellow on Thursday. We're going to play Chicory next on Tuesday, so I've got to make sure I've got that and got it installed. Um, the 14th, folks, the 14th, I want to do a concert. That's a Sunday. I think that's a, I think the 14th is the date. Um, hold on. Um, it is... Let me double check. Is that the right date? Yes, the 14th, which is next Sunday. I'm going to try to make like a whole thing, but if you want a concert, I'm going to do a concert. I'm going to play some flute and do some singing for you. All right? I will try to promote that. Somebody remind me to promote that properly. Thank you all so much. I enjoyed this and I guess this game made me cry. So good job game. Thank you. I appreciate all of you. Take care. If you're not yet on the discord or following on social, please do. We'd love to have you there. I'd love to keep in touch. Um, and yeah, this has been great fun. It's just a lovely game to play. Take care of yourselves and I will see you next time. Bye.